welcome to the part 3 of Villain, the school beauty's plot. If you encounter any issues or have feedback, please let me know in the comments rather than just disliking the video. Your input helps me improve, and I'm here to make sure you have the best experience possible. Enjoy the content. Chapter 76, Part 1. Dragon Blood Dao Fruit. Needless to say, it is the supreme holy object in the eyes of countless body refining monks. Chen Beiyuan once took one of the Blood Dragon Secret Realm. With the blessing of the Dragon Blood Pool, he not only made his body comparable to the sixth grade divine weapon, but also realized the Blood Dragon transformation, a ferocious beast divine ability. Even if he doesn't eat this kind of good food, feeding Anu, the greedy dragon, can make it grow as quickly as possible. At that time, you can also experience a wave of Dragon Knight feeling when traveling. I just don't know if Anu will agree to let him ride. However, with its greedy and playful character, it shouldn't be difficult. If it doesn't work, just take a bamboo pole, tie the dragon blood dao fruit on it, and put it in front of Anu. This silly dragon probably started playing on his own first, so he doesn't care about the extra person. However, compared to dragon blood dao fruit, Chun Beiyuan is more concerned about the newly obtained divine ability at this moment. He is very interested in this divine ability. Stabilizing spell? Ancient Taoist divine ability? It's quite a big deal. This divine ability reminds me of a certain monkey who likes to eat peaches. When it was stealing peaches in the peach orchard, it seemed to have used a immobilization spell to immobilize the seven fairies. If the protagonist had been replaced by someone else, the seven fairies at that time would have been raising a fetus. It's a pity that the monkey only likes to eat peaches and doesn't like women. However, if the monkey hadn't picked peaches at that time, wouldn't he have become a monkey husband in the end? He wouldn't have been suppressed for 500 years. Still too young. Chen Beiyuan, whose thoughts were divergent, recalled a certain popular monkey in his previous life and raised the corners of his mouth slightly. After returning to the room, he looked at the cold and charming young woman and Bi Yu who came up to him. He suddenly became interested and stretched out his finger to tap lightly. Certainly. In an instant, he only felt that at the moment he opened his mouth, part of the energy, blood and spirit in his body were taken away at the same time, condensed into a mysterious spell invisible to the naked eye, and shot directly into the target's body. Host. And Bi Yu, who was greeting her respectfully, opened her mouth. Suddenly, she felt that her body and soul fell into a special state. She could not move and was frozen in place. Only her mind could stay awake. A hint of shock suddenly appeared in her charming eyes. Fear. What happened? Why can't she move? What kind of weird trick is this? Could it be the master's special method? After waking up, she watched Chin Beiyuan getting closer and closer, looking around at her, pointing, and needing her. However, most of the fear in her eyes quickly dissipated. Instead, there was something a little strange about her. The thought of resisting was extinguished unconsciously. This immobilization curse is really mysterious. Although Bu has just recovered her cultivation not long ago, she is also a seventh grade war king and she is also immobilized. However, the consumption is not small, it is not inferior to blood dragon transformation, and it also puts a lot of pressure on the soul. Just when Chen Beiyuan was thinking about whether to further experiment with the effect of the immobilization spell, in a more rigorous and in-death way, suddenly, he heard the sound of house searches and strange howling in the blood pool, and his expression suddenly changed. Gone. This silly dragon has never learned anything else, but he is self-taught when it comes to demolishing a house. Then this is my room. Chen Beiyuan ignored the cold and charming young woman who was fixed in front of him, clenched his fists and walked toward the back room menacingly, just like the monkey who first went to steal the peach when the seven fairies were there. Soon, there was a sudden commotion in the back room, followed by a crackling sound of chasing and fighting. And Biyu? The cold and charming young woman who was frozen in place and mercilessly abandoned looked at the back room in shock. What the hell are you doing? After Lin Jiuxiao was injured, many elders of the Lin family also came to visit. Among them was Lin Jiuzhou's wife Qin Huayue. Zhishao, take good care of your injuries and try to get well soon. Thank you sister-in-law for your concern. Qin Huayue said a few words of concern and then left. But at this moment, she didn't notice that Lin Jiuxiao looked at her back with no respect, but with greedy desire. Before Lin Jiuzhou left, he specifically asked Qin Huayue to come and visit his third brother for him in the past few days to prevent him from giving up on himself. It has to be said that in Lin Jiuzhou's heart, he obviously still cares about his incompetent third brother. Otherwise, he would not go to the Qin family in person for Lin Jiuxiao, an incompetent bastard. However, Lin Jiuzhou could never have imagined that his actions were obviously suspected of attracting wolves into the house. That guy, eldest brother, is so busy that he doesn't even care about his own woman. So he only knows how to fool around outside. I keep saying that I want to revitalize the Lin family. I just shout slogans. Who can't do that? I also want to revitalize the empire. 
Lin Jiuxiao looked at Qin Huayue's back with a look of greed on his face. Obviously, he has coveted Qin Huayue for a long time. If it weren't for his eldest brother, he would have already had an idea. Seeing Qin Huayue appear at this moment, he couldn't help but start thinking. However, no matter how excited he was, there was no reaction from below, as if he was useless. This was undoubtedly like a bucket of cold water poured on him, making his whole body as cold as ice. He lifted the quilt, with a look of confusion and fear on his sinister face. Is it possible that he is really useless? What should he do with the 78 lovers he keeps outside? By Yuza! Lin Jiuxiao's eyes turned red, and he almost squeezed out the name that made him want to be cut into pieces through his teeth. It's because of this little bastard that he is like this. In addition, there is that bitch from the Long family. If you just obey him, everything will be fine, right? And Chen Bei Yuan? Just when Lin Jiuxiao fell into a rage of incompetence, he suddenly heard a lot of noise outside and suddenly woke up. A servant was dressed roughly and seemed ready to report something, but he was suddenly called in. Come in, what happened outside? Third young master, something bad has happened. Young master, he, he, something happened. The servant who was called in was pale, panting, and couldn't even speak clearly. However, Lin Jiuxiao's eyes lit up, and he suddenly became energetic. He grabbed the servant's collar and looked excited. What happened to my eldest brother? What happened to my eldest brother? Is he dead? Was he beaten to death by Chen Beiyuan? Is my father planning to choose a new heir? Tell me, tell me quickly. Chapter 77, Part 1 When Lin Jiuxiao heard that something happened to her eldest brother, her first reaction was not great sadness, but great joy. If his eldest brother is not dead, how can he ascend to power? If his eldest brother is not dead, how can he play with his sister-in-law? It doesn't matter whether the eldest brother dies or not. Whether he can rise to the top and play the role of sister-in-law is the most important thing. As for saying that the eldest brother died because of him, no problem, I will definitely take the Donghua Lin family, hug my sister-in-law, and avenge the death of my eldest brother. Be brothers. In my heart. No, my eldest brother is dead. I should cry some tears. Otherwise, if you can't deceive the old man in the family, what will you do if you don't let him take over? Lin Jiuxiao suppressed the excitement in her heart and wanted to make a sad expression and shed a few crocodile tears, but she couldn't stop the wild laughter on her lips. I have to say that he has to be the beast. In the original work, Lin Jiuxiao may be the only talent who can compete with Son of Fortune Lin Xiao in terms of bottom line. However, before Lin Jiuxiao's dream of becoming the heir could arise, the next words of the trembling servant in front of him broke his dream. Third young master, the eldest young master is not dead yet. The expression on Lin Jiuxiao's face froze, half happy and half sad, looking extremely funny, like a clown. He stared at the little man in front of him, his eyes instantly becoming eerie and terrifying. What did you say? Third young master, the eldest young master is not dead yet. He was just seriously injured and passed out. The servant looked pale and explained tremblingly. It was obvious that he had just seen and heard something he shouldn't have known. The third young master seems to want the eldest young master to die. Click. His neck was broken. The body fell directly to the ground. I knew you were a spy lurking in the Lin family. I just reacted just to deceive you. I didn't expect that you still don't repent and dare to sow discord between our brothers. You deserve to die. Lin Jiuxiao had an angry look on his face, clenched his fists, and angrily shouted at the corpse on the ground. But at this moment, he felt frightened and angry in his heart. Fortunately, there was no third party. Otherwise, based on what he just said, the position of the head of the Lin family has nothing to do with him. No, the eldest brother is not dead yet, and he cannot take the position, so he can only endure it for the time being. He must first solve the problem of not being able to use his lifeblood. When rights are not yet obtained, beauty must not be lost. Moreover, the Lin family will not choose this person with no descendants to be the head of the family. This problem is killing me. Suddenly, Lin Jiuxiao remembered something. It seemed that Lin Xiao had boasted in front of him about how superb and powerful his medical skills were. I just don't know if it's true or not. Let Lin Xiao come. Backyard. Lin Xiao was stripped naked and hung upside down, with whip marks all over his body and a look of humiliation and anger on his face. Just when something happened to Lin Jiuxiao, he was arrested by Lin Jiuzhou. Originally, with Lin Jiuzhou's character, Lin Xiao was definitely dead. However, I don't know if the protagonist's halo plays a role. When Lin Jiuxiao woke up, she immediately spoke to her eldest brother and saved him. As a result, the protagonist Lin Xiao, the miracle doctor, managed to survive. However, death penalty can be avoided, but living crime cannot be avoided. He eventually received a whipping. Lin Xiao, who had been hanging for a whole night, could no longer suppress his hatred for Lin Jiuzhou. Even the resentment of giving away the daughter before was transferred to Lin Jiuzhou. But before he could figure out a way to deal with Lin Jiuzhou, he vaguely heard some incredible news from a passing servant. Chen Beiyuan, 
defeated Lin Jiuzhou within ten moves. This is impossible. Lin Xiao looked in disbelief. He knew exactly how powerful Lin Jiuzhou was. Chen Beiyuan defeated him within ten moves. Although Lin Xiao still didn't believe it, his heart felt like a huge boulder was pressing on him. At this moment, a figure walked directly towards him. Lin family, main courtyard, a ball without its skin, revealing scarlet flesh and faintly pulsing tendons, was placed on the bed like a long snake creature with its scales peeled off. Requiem incense specially used to nourish the soul is lit around the place. Normally, as the young master of the Lin family, Lin Jiuzhou should receive the best treatment as soon as possible after being brought back to the family. However, Lin Jiuzhou, who was slightly conscious, directly refused the treatment from his family. Is this a big deal? Lin Jiuzhou's injuries were not serious. If he remained untreated, something would happen. His act of self-destruction instantly alarmed the entire Lin family. Lin Xufeng, who rushed over in a hurry, looked at the huge, squirming mass of flesh and blood in front of him and sighed. Victory and defeat are common things in military affairs. Who can guarantee that he will always win? As long as he can survive, there are endless possibilities. Jiuzhou, it's not a bad thing that you failed this time. You were too proud before and didn't experience much setbacks. This failure may help you grow. Back then, I named you Jiuzhou because I hoped that you would have the ambition to establish Jiuzhou, build a great cause for the family, and lead the Lin family to a higher peak. With all these setbacks now, are you going to give up and surrender? I think back then, I also lost to Qin Zhiqing, but so what? Over the years, the Qin family has suppressed the Lin family many times, but I have endured it. Those who achieve great things must first learn to be patient. Tolerating for a while is for the better in the future. Counterattack. At this moment, Lin Xufeng just wanted to persuade his eldest son to accept the family's treatment, instead of giving up on himself because of a failure. If Lin Jiuzhou surrendered because of one failure, it would be a huge disappointment to him as a father. However, what the huge mass of flesh and blood in front of him said next made him freeze on the spot. Send me to Wan Snake Cave. 10,000 Snake Cave? 10,000 Snake Cave is a special secret realm controlled by the Lin family, which contains a large number of terrifying snake-like beasts. Lin Jiuzhou had previously practiced the Lin family's 8th grade technique, Xinin Demon Transformation Sutra, in Wanchi Cave, and used Xinin Sky Swallowing Python as his natal demon body, etc. Lin Xufeng's pupils trembled, and he stared at the huge, squirming flesh and blood in front of him. He vaguely saw that there seemed to be a thin black film growing under the scarlet flesh. Is this about shedding? I see. No wonder you chose the Xinin Sky Swallowing Python as your natal demon body. Every time a snake sheds its skin, it is a new life and the beginning of becoming stronger. This time, although you lost to Chen Beiyuan, you did speed up your shedding and gained great benefits. After breaking, you can stand again. Lin Xufeng's majestic face couldn't help but be excited. He never expected that his eldest son not only did not give up on himself after this disastrous defeat, but actually received huge benefits and had the possibility of going further. Ha ha ha, with such talent and luck, why worry about the Lin family not being prosperous? Today's things don't need to be told to my second sister. Lin Xufeng was stunned for a moment, then nodded silently. Lin Xiao never dreamed that the person to whom he would demonstrate his medical skills perfectly for the first time would actually be a man. When he was put down from the backyard and brought to Lin Xiaoxiao's room, he immediately understood the other party's purpose. In this regard, Lin Xiao is full of confidence. Isn't it just withered and unusable? What kind of problem is this? You know, he is a man with unwritten medical scriptures. Jiu Xiao, your meridians below are blocked, causing you to lose feeling. I can cure such a minor disease with just one shot. Lin Xiao was full of confidence, and he was even more determined to show off in front of Lin Jiuxiao, raise his own worth, and spread his superb medical skills. By then, with his medical skills, he would be enough to become a guest of all forces. So, under Lin Jiuxiao's dubious gaze, he directly used the ice-cold divine needle recorded in the wordless medical scripture and pierced Lin Jiuxiao's lower body. Aha! Uh -huh. One stitch down. Chapter 77, Part 2. Lin Jiuxiao felt a numbness at first, and then a chill, and suddenly said in surprise, I feel it, I feel it. Brother Lin, you really didn't brag. You are really a miracle doctor. In response, Lin Xiao just smiled indifferently, but soon he couldn't laugh anymore. Because Lin Jiuxiao in front of him actually reacted to him. Lin Xiao? Chapter 78, Part 1. He, what's going on? Could it be that the ice-cold divine needle has this effect? No. Lin Xiao didn't think about it at first, but thought it might be his medical skills. But soon, he found that Lin Jiuxiao's eyes seemed a little wrong when he looked at him. For some reason, when Lin Jiuxiao saw that his life force was expected to recover, he was so excited that he felt that Lin Zhao's resolute face, serious expression, 
and focused eyes in front of him were all inexplicably charming. So, he subconsciously grabbed Lin Zhao's hand with an excited look on his face. Brother Lin, your medical skills are really amazing, much better than those shitty great masters. Hey, Brother Lin, your hands are quite smooth, more tender than women, how do you usually maintain them? As he spoke, he habitually touched them. Wow, something's wrong. Could this guy? Lin Xiao instantly recalled the special hobbies of some children from wealthy families, and suddenly felt his scalp tingling and his hair stood up. Damn, this dandy boy not only wants to attack Lin Ruabing, but now he won't let him go either. If I had known earlier, I shouldn't have cured this little bastard. Just as Chun Beiyuan expected, the imperial family finally came out to clean up the mess. No, it should be to maintain order and mediate conflicts. The imperial family called on the Donghua Chen family and the Donghua Lin family to focus on harmony and use their guns to attack others instead of others. Before, when Chin Beiyuan and Lin Jiuzhou were at loggerheads and the two top families were fighting head-on, the imperial family didn't even come out to stop them. Now, as soon as the matter was over, they rushed out to maintain peace. It can be said that the most disappointed that the Chin family and the Lin family didn't fight this time may be the imperial family and other top families. There is no way. If the two top families that hold 80% of the military power of the empire get along well and are inseparable, the first one to curse them is the imperial family. If they can fight, it will definitely be the best. At that time, the imperial family can also use this opportunity to weaken the strength of the two families and take back some military power. Other top families have also coveted the military power in the hands of these two families for a long time and have always wanted to intervene. Unfortunately, they have never found an opportunity. I thought this time might be an opportunity. But after Chan Beiyuan defeated Lin Jiuzhou, the second child of the Donghua Lin family quickly gave in and quickly reached an internal reconciliation with the eldest brother of the Donghua Chen family and directly exposed the matter. The rapid reconciliation of the two families undoubtedly made many people's calculations fall through. Lung's ancestral home. Lung Ruabing, who was about to take his vegetative father out to hide for a few days, was stunned when he learned that the Chen family and the Lin family had reached a reconciliation. So, the matter is over. Long Ruabing leaned against the corner, slid down a little bit, huddled in the corner, buried between his knees, and muttered to himself. From beginning to end, as the fuse and the victim, no one mentioned her. Even the various forces ignored it. Those high-ranking bigwigs would not care about the so-called innocence and life and death of a small person. This time, if it weren't for Chen Beiyuan, no one would care even if she died in the Kyoto nightclub. The reconciliation between the two giants, the Donghua Chen family and the Donghua Lin family, seem to have revealed all the things. However, Chun Beiyuan's victory over Lin Jiuzhou is far from over. Almost at the same moment, all the young powerful men in the empire learned about this matter immediately. Chen family. Chen Beiyuan was naked and soaking in the blood pool. His eyes were dark, thinking about something. A new, which should have been more than 10 meters long, was now less than half a meter long, entangled directly on his body. For Dragon Race, body shape changes have never been a problem. Becoming bigger or smaller is just a thought. The majestic scarlet dragon head was leaning on his head, shaking his head from time to time, with a look of enjoyment on his face. Occasionally, he would stick out his dragon tongue and lick and bite Chen Beiyuan's head, just like a naughty child. This is because Chen Beiyuan's own physical body is strong enough, comparable to ferocious beasts. If it had been anyone else, this naughty kid anew would have been killed. For this playful little guy, Chen Beiyuan is the closest and closest person, not just because of his bloodline, also because the other party feeds her food drinks, and plays with her every day. She likes this guy so much. Owner. And Bu was about to step forward to serve. But before he could get closer, he was stared at by Anu's strange and oppressive dual pupils. And Bu's cold and charming face was slightly stiff, and she felt a sense of suffocation coming over her like a tide, and she stopped immediately. Ever since Anu hatched, it has been very repulsive to people of the opposite sex approaching Chan Beiyuan, almost wishing that he could occupy Chan Beiyuan. Last time, and Bu almost didn't let her eat her because of this. Although it had just been reborn and was still in a state of confusion, Chan Beiyuan's domineering character before his rebirth was vaguely revealed. Chen Beiyuan ignored the scene of a confrontation between one person and one dragon, but was thinking about other things. There are so many fools out there who want to play the game of snipe and clam competing for the fisherman's profit. In the Kyoto nightclub incident, various companies must have been involved secretly, otherwise, it wouldn't have been such a big fuss. Lin Jiuzhou must have discovered something. That boy by Yuza is being used as a gun. There may still be a lot of doubts about the Kyoto nightclub incident. Not many of the friends by Yuza called to help at that time were good. Most of them were psychologically evil. When they broke into the box, some people deliberately made by Yuza angry in front of him and aroused by Yuza's anger, just to make things worse. Otherwise, with so many people at that time, they really couldn't stop by Yuza who was above? 
Isn't it just to make things bigger and bring fire to the Qin family? It would be better if the Qin family and the Lin family could fight. It is undeniable that some people's plans succeeded. Even if Lin Jiuzhou sensed something was wrong, his third brother was beaten like that, which almost put the Lin family on the fire. As the young master of the Lin family, he must react. Unfortunately, the final result disappointed those behind the scenes. The Zhu family, the Wei family, the Wang family, the Li family, all of them are highly suspicious. That's right. The Chen family and the Lin family hold the military power of the empire. Who wouldn't be excited to see it? Since we can't guess, let's take action. Everyone who may be involved must be dealt with. No matter what evidence the Chen family needs to do something, suspicion is enough. He picked up the young master's token next to him and directly issued a secret order. That night, the playboys of Zhu, Wei, Wang, Li, and other famous families were suddenly attacked by mysterious beasts. The limbs that had just been connected were interrupted again. Among them, some who resisted fiercely even had their third legs broken. Chapter 79, Part 1 The next day, have you heard? A lot of mysterious beasts have appeared in Kyoto recently. Hiss, no way, this is the capital of the empire. How come there are ferocious beasts? Both the investigation department and the security department are just for free? What will happen if someone dies? Hey, you don't understand. That mysterious ferocious beast is extraordinary. It never bullies ordinary people like us, but only looks for the dandy boys from wealthy families. Last night, several dandies from top aristocratic families suffered a disaster. Their limbs were broken and their clothes were stripped off. It is said that some of them even had their lower bodies broken. Hey, the lower part is smashed, so I'm afraid it will hurt a little. But why did I hear that the mysterious beast looks like a human? It shouldn't be a beast. You're so stubborn. They say it's a ferocious beast above. That's a ferocious beast. At most, it looks more like a human. That ferocious beast doesn't mess with us plain-headed people, but only those dandy boys. We just watched the show. Several dandies from top aristocratic families had their hands and feet broken overnight, and several others, like Lin Jiuxiao, had their fifth limbs broken. Such breaking news spread throughout Kyoto overnight, igniting countless gossips and becoming the after-dinner chat of countless gourmets. But the strange thing is that the families behind these dandies all chose to remain silent, as if they didn't see anything. Every fool knows that this matter must be related to the Donghua Chen family. Where did Yinjing come from so many mysterious beasts? It's not even the dog raised by the Chin family. But so what? Everyone obviously knew that they were dirty and had something to do with the Kyoto nightclub incident before, so they didn't dare to make the matter a big deal. Besides, even if they knew that Chin Beiyuan ordered someone to do it, what could they do? Can you still kill the young master of the Chin family? Are you crazy? Who can go head to head with someone with a gun? Not a diehard. Bayuza did some things and immediately had to run away quietly for fear of being dealt with later. There were some things that Chin Beiyuan did openly and openly, and he even showed it to his face, but everyone remained silent and pretended to be deaf and dumb. There is no way. The gap between people is like this. People bully the weak and fear the strong. Are there things you can't do? But I can. Why? Just because behind Chin Beiyuan is the Donghua Chun family. The Donghua Chin family holds the largest, thickest, and hardest guns in the empire. Even the royal family of the empire has to be polite and try their best to win over them. What about other people? Chen Beiyuan's mysterious fiancé finally returned to Yinjing as quickly as possible. She didn't even go back to the Bai family, but came directly to the Chen family. As the future hostess of the Chen family, it is natural to imagine the treatment Bai Ruawei will receive. The door of the Chen family, which even Lin Jiuzhou could not enter, was now open to her future mistress. The old housekeeper who had served the Chen family for three generations respectfully stood at the gate to greet him and led him to the inner courtyard of the Chen family. Yes, it's not the Chen family's living room, but directly into the inner courtyard. This shows the true attitude of the Chen family towards Bai Ruawei. Although they were just engaged and not married yet, the Chen family clearly regarded Bai Ruawei as one of their own. Even Bai Ruawei was a little flattered by such treatment, even a little moved. Soon, Bai Ruawei met her fiancé Chen Beiyuan and a certain idler named Bai Yuza in the inner courtyard. Bai Ruawei, who was wearing a white dress and plain skirt, was tall and looked like a mature lady, holding in her hands a snow-white, fluffy little fox with seven tails and yawning lazily. A pair of gentle, watery eyes looked directly at the young figure in front of him, who was very different from what he had remembered, and had changed greatly. His stunning face seemed a little moved. Beiyuan, long time no see. It's been a long time indeed. She has not seen Chen Beiyuan for several years. Previously, in order to further her cultivation and break through to the sixth grade battle king, she went to the far north alone to seek opportunities for breakthrough. After not seeing each other for a few years, the boy who had always been taciturn was now as tall as her and had undergone earth-shaking changes. Just like the rising sun, it blooms with the most dazzling light. 
Bai Ruawe thought that her fiancé might suffer at the hands of Lin Jiozhou's poisonous snake this time, but the result was unexpected. As a result, the poisonous snake suffered a big loss. As the winner, Chun Beiyuan is almost famous in Donghua, attracting the attention of countless younger generations. It can be said that the result of that battle directly broke some previous rumors. Bai Ruawe began to understand very clearly how much burden and pressure was placed on the 12-year-old boy six years ago. Because of a prophecy made by the Lord of Heavenly Secrets Pavilion, this young man almost attracted the attention of the entire Donghua Empire. At an age when he should have let his instincts fly, this taciturn young man chose boring practice. His childhood was spent almost all the time practicing. Under the seemingly dazzling halo now, it is unknown how much blood and sweat has been shed. Long time no see, Ruawe. Chen Beiyuan had a smile on his face and looked at the nominal, fiancé, in front of him with complicated eyes. Just as soon as they met, the prison suppressing demonic energy in his body began to become restless. The reason for the restlessness was by Ruawei in front of her. My fiancé is not a simple person, because she is also one of the destiny heroines. On the surface, she is the top prodigy of the Donghua by family. Her strength is also among the top among the younger generation, and she happens to be ranked in the top ten. But in fact, her true strength is enough to rank in the top five, or even the top three, and is even more terrifying than Lin Juzhou before. Among all the destined heroines, Bai Ruawe is undoubtedly the most difficult one, because her fighting spirit and abilities are just enough to restrain her original self, the destined villain. Bai Ruawe's fighting spirit is the legendary auspicious beast, Bai Zai. He can understand the affairs of heaven and earth, ghosts and gods, communicate with all things, possess the power of natural affinity, and have the ability to ward off evil spirits and eliminate demons. This is almost a righteous beast, with natural restraint against all evil spirits and heretics. And Bai Ruawe also practiced an extremely powerful righteous method, which, combined with her own, Bai Zai, fighting spirit, was terrifying. And Chun Beiyuan, the destined villain, practices Demon Dao. Now, it's interesting. If we say that Chun Beiyuan, the destined villain, is Demon Dao, then Bai Ruawe is equivalent to the existence of the righteous fairy. The abilities between the two can be said to be mutually exclusive. In the original work, the original destiny villain not only suffered a great loss from Bai Ruawe, his fiance, but also almost died at her hands. This is something that no other destiny heroine can do. Chapter 80, Part 1 In the original work, the original person was plotted by Lin Xiao in the early stage, which led to a disastrous defeat in the school competition. In addition, he was influenced by the protagonist's luck, which caused a drastic change in his temperament, and he actually fell in love with Long Ruabing. For this reason, the original person not only gave up the idea of killing the daughter to become a Taoist priest, but also took the initiative to break off the engagement with the Bai family and wanted to marry Long Ruabing. This time, the Bai family was completely offended. At the same time, Bai Ruawei's fiancé was also greatly offended. Bai Ruawei, the luck heroine, seems to be a gentle lady on the surface, just like the sister next door. She always has a natural affinity and holy appeal, just like a righteous fairy. But that's just a disguise. In fact, her character is extremely extreme, domineering, crazy, and can even be said to have a pathological desire to control. As early as six years ago, he regarded the original body as a forbidden concubine and his own property. He has been controlling his own little brother to monitor the original body's every move. She can allow the original person to play with other women before getting married, just as practicing skills, but she will never allow the original person to betray her and marry other women. In the original work, Bai Ruawei wanted to kill Long Ruabing many times, but was blocked and humiliated by Chan Beiyuan. In the end, by Ruawei, the lucky heroine, finally turned from love to hate and turned dark. After turning black, by Ruawei can be said to be the most difficult and terrifying heroine. Even I, the destined villain, was tortured so much by her. Chan Beiyuan looked at the gentle lady in front of him with complicated eyes, seeming to be a little amazed at the ruthless means and terrifying wisdom hidden behind her. In the early stages of the plot, the darkened by Ruawei can be said to be the most terrifying existence among all the luck heroines. He showed terrifying scheming and calculating abilities, and even managed to defeat son of Fortune Lin, Xiao, and his destined villain. She almost looks like a female Zhuge. In the early stages of the plot, in order to take revenge on her original self, Bai Ruawei took the initiative to find Lin Xiao, the son of Fortune, and actually deceived Lin Xiao, the son of Fortune, into lameness, and finally formed the Demon Slayer Alliance. Specifically to deal with the original demon. Soon, in the first layout led by Bai Ruawei, Lin Xiao took the initiative as a bait to lure the original body out. At the same time, she also let people lure away Mr. Chin, the guardian. And when Lin Xiao was chased all the way by his original self and beaten half to death, Bai Ruawei, who was lurking in the dark, suddenly took action, 
showing terrifying strength and the ability to restrain the original body's magic skills. He actually defeated the original body head-on and captured him alive. The original character in the original work did not have a system. He must have experienced many setbacks during his growth, and defeat is normal. After Chen Beiyuan was defeated and captured alive, Lin Xiao was overjoyed and prepared to kill him. However, at this time, Bai Ruawei said that there was a way to transform it for her own use. Lin Xiao was overjoyed, thinking that the transformation method Bai Ruawei mentioned was spiritual. The Bai family is a top family after all, and they must have some special secrets. If they can control Chen Beiyuan, it will be equivalent to indirectly controlling the entire Donghua Chen family. The benefits can be said to have made Lin Xiao so excited that he was shaking his head at the time. So, he agreed. However, what he didn't know was that the transformation method by Ruowei mentioned was not spiritual, but physical. As a result, the defeated Devil Chun was taken away by the kind-hearted fairy by to be transformed. This transformation lasted for three days and three nights. It's a pity that Devil Chun still has his devilish nature and refuses to give in. However, three days later, the kind-hearted fairy by temporarily softened her heart and released Devil Chun, then turned around and told Lin Xiao that he accidentally ran away. Lin Xiao? Don't you mean transition? Why did you run away while crossing the river? He ran away. The beating he received before was not in vain. Lin Xiao wanted to be angry, but Fairy Bai put away her resentment with a few words and said that capturing Demon Chun alive would be a piece of cake, and she only needed a little trick. As a result, Bai Xianzi deceived and added mental CPU, and Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, was soon deceived again. However, Fairy Bai still has strength after all. In the early and middle stages of the plot, Chun Beiyuan's many defeats were all related to her. This woman can be said to be Lin Zhao's female strategist. She has captured the devil Chen Beiyuan alive seven times in a row. Whenever Lin Xiao proposed to kill the demon Chen Beiyuan directly, the kind-hearted fairy Bai would always wave her hand to stop her, saying that she was not in a hurry and let her try to transform first, and if she failed, she would kill him again. Not too late. In the end, devil Chen, who was captured alive, was always taken away by fairy Bai and was transformed and cleaned up fiercely. Every time, Devil Chen complained that Tian Tian should not respond, that the earth and the earth were not functioning properly, and suffered humiliation. Then, as time went by, Devil Chen could always find an opportunity to run away and escape. However, every time Demon Chen escaped, his strength quickly increased, and he hit Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, with even greater force. After all, paper can't keep fire. Several other lucky heroines also noticed something was wrong. So they ran to take a peek while Bai Fairy was transforming, and then they saw the one who was being played. The only ones who were transformed were Chen Beiyuan in the second half of his life. Then, several lucky heroines exploded on the spot, and several women started fighting. Devil Chun, who was only half alive, took this opportunity to run away quickly. And as Bai Ruowei's so-called transformation method was exposed by other heroines, Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, was the first to lose control. I risked my life to cooperate with you. I was used as bait time and time again, and was beaten half to death by Chen Beiyuan time and time again. Half of my life was gone. You really had a lot of fun. I quit. Then, the Demon Slayer Alliance broke up directly. In addition, Chen Beiyuan gradually grew up through repeated failures, and gradually became Chen Laoma in the late stage of the plot. Even if Fairy Bai wanted to capture him alive, he couldn't do it. In the end, there was nothing left to do, and Lin Xiao was beaten to death by the grown-up Chen Laoma. In the end, Lin Xiao took the initiative to find Bai Ruawei to cooperate and re-establish the Demon Slayer Alliance. Bai Ruawei took this opportunity to propose a grand plan called Feeding Demons with Your Body. In order to implement this plan smoothly, Fairy Bai said that she needs the help of several other lucky heroines. Lin Xiao agreed to the plan even though his heart was aching. Ever since, the newly grown old demon Chun was tortured by the evil plan of the White Fairy. At that time, when Chen Beiyuan was reading the original work, he was shocked by the incredible operation of this highly intelligent luck heroine. This bitch is really cruel. When you become black, you really torment people to death. Chapter 81, Part 1 Chen Beiyuan looked at the gentle lady, holding the snow-white fox in front of him with complicated eyes. It's really hard to connect her with the kind-hearted white fairy in the original work. It can only be said that the black and fairy Bai and the Bai Ruawe at this moment are simply two extremely contrasting existences. In other words, the Black and Fairy Bai is the most real side of Bai Ruawei, but she has always controlled her desires and disguised herself well in front of Chen Beiyuan. In essence, Bai Ruawei seems to be gentle and kind, and under her holy and beautiful appearance, she hides an arrogant and paranoid heart. From the moment she met Chen Beiyuan six years ago, she regarded the 12-year-old Chen Beiyuan as her forbidden wife and her property. For six years, she had been paying attention to every move of her fiancé almost all the time, 
waiting to reap the final fruits. In the past six years, everything Chen Beiyuan has done has been clearly known to her through various channels. She was almost playing a nurturing game, watching her fiancé grow up bit by bit until he was ready to take action. In the original novel, Long Ruabing took the lead in front of her, but she could bear it. Because she knew very well that she would be the future mistress of the Chen family and the royal wife of Chen Beiyuan. As a wife, she can tolerate some of her husband's little problems. Isn't it just fun? That kid is not playful. It's okay. You can play a few more. But she would never allow Chen Beiyuan to cancel the engagement, betray her, and marry another woman. However, the only thing that is certain is that Bai Ruawei's love for him can be said to be very pure. In fact, it can be said that it is pure to the point of deformity. From beginning to end, she had no intention of killing Chen Beiyuan. In the plot, she has many opportunities to kill Chen Beiyuan. But she chose to be transformed and whipped severely, hoping to sacrifice her life to become a benevolent person and feed the devil with her own body, so that Devil Chun could change his mind. Every time when Devil Chen was in deep trouble, she would always be soft-hearted, quietly let people go, and let him go. Afterwards, Lin Xiao was used as bait to continue to lure out Devil Chen, continue to capture him alive, and continue to take Du Hua away. She is really capable of tossing things around, and she never tires of it. As a result, Demon Chen's legs went weak when he saw her. If Chen Motu changed his tone at that time and called his wife, Bai Ruwei voted in minutes, changed sides on the spot, and asked her to kill Lin Xiao twice without hesitation. All we can do is, fate plays tricks on people. Chen Beiyuan was filled with emotion when he saw that Bai Ruwei's emotions were almost paranoid and abnormal in the original work. Now, after he transmigrated and became Chen Beiyuan, he is even more disgusted. Hey, it's hard to make the destiny villain of Urban Shuangwen. Everyone wants to mess with him still the kind that leads to death. It's too much. In contrast, Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, does not have such troubles, except for having too many hats on his head and often being forbearing. Everything else is pretty good. However, Bai Ruawei still has a certain bottom line. If she had started taking action six years ago, mice, that scene would be unimaginable. Chen Beiyuan shuddered, obviously frightened by this sudden idea. At this moment, Bai Ruawei, who was stared at by Chen Beiyuan's affectionate eyes, felt her mouth was dry, her heart was beating wildly, and her whole body had some strange reactions. Six years. A full six years of cultivation. She didn't know how much emotion she had placed on the young man in front of her. She has finally waited for this day. Hiss. It's finally time to take action. Bai Ruawe swallowed secretly and tried not to lose her composure too much. She still maintained a gentle expression and looked at the young man who was as tall as her in front of her with some emotion. Yes, we haven't seen each other for a few years, and you are already as tall as me. Her eyes were blurry, as if she was nostalgic, and she subconsciously reached out to touch his head, just like the day we met six years ago. But just as her kakin was approaching, a small head suddenly popped out from the collar of Chan Beiwen's sleeves and growled at her, as if he was declaring sovereignty. A terrifying and terrifying dragon power erupted instantly. Bai Ruawei paused and her pupils shrank. Chirp! The snow-white fox in her arms instantly exploded with fur. Its eyes showed anger and fear and it actually revealed the aura of a seventh-grade ferocious beast, and it also roared, as if to protect its master. Obviously, this fox is a terrifying being comparable to the seventh-grade war emperor. Ice and snow fox, however, judging from the frightened look in this ice and snow demon fox's body and frightened look in its eyes, it was obvious that it had some harsh words. While growling and confronting, he also shrank into by Ruawei's arms. Born dual pupils. Mutated pure blood dragon? Bai Ruawe looked at the miniature version of Anu that had shrunk countless times with a look of surprise on her face, and her eyes were a little moved. As a beast-controlling family, the Bai family naturally has a good understanding of their respective ferocious beasts. She could tell at a glance that the blood of the blood dragon on Chen Beiyuan was extremely pure. Its parents are most likely pure blood dragon race, and not from the same clan. Hence the phenomenon similar to born dual pupils. Even though it's only a sixth-grade beast, even the seventh-grade beast can't defeat it if it really puts its hands on it. There is no way. The pure-blooded dragon race is so domineering and powerful. What's more, this is a mutated pure-blood dragon. Such a rare existence may not even be owned by the royal family. There has never been such a treasure in her by family, etc. Why does this blood dragon feel like it was just born? He became a sixth-grade beast not long after he was born? By Ruawei's eyes changed slightly. Coming from a family of beast masters, she instantly noticed something was wrong. Immediately, she recalled Chen Beiyuan's reward for the college competition and a trip to the Blood Dragon secret realm. Could it be? It has to be said that no one who can become the heroine of destiny is simple. Lung Ruabing. Unnu. Chun Beiyuan shouted. I saw that the pocket version of the Blood Dragon suddenly stopped roaring, 
but raised its head arrogantly, crawled out of the clothes little by little, rested its little head directly on Chan Biwen's head, and blew out hot breath from its mouth and nose, as if it was swearing an oath. Same as sovereignty. Eh? Yuan, is a new s. Chin Bei Yuan just smiled helplessly at Anu's almost domineering declaration of sovereignty. Although he has been reborn as a new individual, he has inherited the domineering character of the bloody dragon emperor from his previous life. However, it also learned very quickly. It remembered his name very clearly and even gave him a nickname. Chin Bei Yuan smiled apologetically at the fiancé in front of him and explained, Sorry, Anu was born not long ago and her personality is not very good. I just signed a blood oath contract with her some time ago. Chapter 82, Part 1 He was born not long ago. Has a bad personality. Blood oath contract? It has to be said that Chin Bei Yuan's seemingly unintentional explanation is extremely confusing. Bai Ruawei's eyes flashed slightly, and she immediately thought of the Blood Dragon secret realm that Chin Bei Yuan had visited before. The dragon blood pool in the Blood Dragon secret realm is related to the legendary Blood Dragon Emperor. Could this mutated blood dragon be related to the Blood Evil Dragon Emperor? Is it a direct blood descendant? Judging from the time, it is quite consistent. Wait, the Blood Evil Dragon Emperor actually left a dragon egg in the Blood Dragon secret realm? Then, no one discovered him. Bei Yuan just went in and discovered it? Hiss. What kind of luck is this? Bai Ruawe suddenly took a breath of cold air, and her thoughts were directly led astray. It's no wonder she thought wrong. The mutated blood dragon in front of her was too close to Chan Bei Yuan. It was almost like signing a blood oath contract. It was precisely because of this that she never thought about the mutated blood dragon in front of her as the rebirth of the bloody dragon emperor. Bei Yuan, I didn't expect you to have such an opportunity to get a pure-blooded dragon race as a pet. As a beast-controlling family in the empire, the Bai family has never had such a high-quality pure-blood dragon race. While Bai Ruawei was amazed, I am also sincerely happy for Bei Yuan. If this mutated blood dragon is really a direct blood descendant of the blood evil dragon emperor, then its potential would be hard to estimate. That blood evil dragon emperor is not simple. He is not only an alien among the dragon race, but also has a changeable personality and is violent and unruly. Compared with those evil dragons, the evil dragon is even more vicious. It is said that the blood evil dragon emperor is extremely hostile to dragon race and kills dragons on sight. Countless sub-dragon and pure-blooded dragon races have died at his hands. He even single-handedly defeated two terrifying dragon emperors and escaped with his whole body. However, it mysteriously disappeared decades ago. As long as the mutated blood dragon on Chen Beiyuan has inherited some of the fierce power of the blood evil dragon emperor, it is a top-notch beast. Even for top families like the Bai family, it is difficult to find such rare beast pets with terrifying potential. However, for some reason, her intuition always told her that she seemed to have overlooked something. Moreover, the mutant blood dragon seemed to be too close to Beiyuan, and there was something wrong with the way he looked at Beiyuan. It didn't look like the way a pet looked at its master. He is ignorant and unabashedly domineering, as if he is looking at his own prey? It's a bit like the way she looks at Beiyuan. It must be an illusion. Anu and I are destined to be together. Seeing Bai Ruawei deep in thought, the corners of Chan Beiyuan's mouth curved slightly, and his dark eyes shone with a special light. Anu's existence will be exposed sooner or later. In this case, let's put a vest on it first. Suspected to be a descendant of the bloody dragon emperor, it's much better than the blood evil dragon emperor who is suspected of being reborn so as not to attract too many people to covet you. Before your strength reaches its peak, you still need to keep a low profile. Previously, there was a certain unlucky guy who possessed the 8th grade magic weapon, which caused the 8th grade war emperor to ignore his strong demeanor and directly leave the field to escape. Naturally, Chin Bei Yuan should take warning from this kind of thing. Of course, the imperial royal family can probably guess the true identity of Anu. But with the old man here, the imperial family would not break up with him and come to ask for it. At that time, when he breaks through the 8th grade war emperor, no, even the 7th grade war emperor. Even if the identity of Anu is exposed, who would dare to covet him? I'll blow the dog's head off for you. However, Anu's growth rate is still somewhat beyond my expectations. In terms of strength alone, Anu's strength at the moment is probably even more terrifying than those of the top prodigies in the empire. If I really make a move, I may not be able to suppress this little silly dragon without using those few trump cards. The dragon emperor's rebirth is really terrifying. Chen Beiyuan stretched out his hand and scratched the chin of Anu on his head. Anu immediately made a sound of pleasure, and when his finger wanted to leave, he bit it directly to prevent him from leaving, and signaled Chen Beiyuan to continue. In response, Chen Beiyuan just smiled fondly and continued to tease Silly Dragon. Bai Ruawe looked at the intimate behavior of one person and one dragon in front of her, and felt that some kind of uneasy feeling in her heart became more and more intense. 
Is it possible that there is something else she hasn't discovered? Just as Bai Ruawei was lost in thought, she suddenly saw a sneaky figure preparing to slip away from the corner of her eye. For Bai Yuza, in the Bai family, the one he fears most is his sister. There's nothing I can do about it. I've been beaten since childhood, and it's hard not to be afraid. In his heart, if we say he is the little devil incarnate in the Bai family, then, the seemingly gentle and virtuous mature lady in front of me is the real great demon king. This female devil's hair is on fire, and even the old man can't stop it. This time, the matter was so big. Although the brother-in-law settled the matter, he knew very well that the family would not let him off easily. Just when he was about to sneak away quietly, Kakin behind him grabbed him by the collar, like grabbing a chicken. Bai Ruawe smiled tenderly at her trembling brother, scaring him like a quail. However, she looked at Chin Beiyuan with a sincere face. Beiyuan, I'm going to trouble you this time. I've only been away for a few years, and this bastard has made a bunch of bad friends and caused such a big thing. This time, if you hadn't stepped in to smooth things over, the Bai family would have been a little bit confused. Passive, I'll take this little bastard back first. Although she wanted to stay with Chin Beiyuan for a while longer, her family was still waiting for her to take him back to report that he was safe. This little bastard lets those foolish friends serve as guns, and he still thinks he's loyal. If Chin Beiyuan hadn't taken action, this little bastard would have fallen into the hands of the Lin family and would have died or shed his skin. This time, he must be taught a profound lesson. Now that the family has prepared the family law, the only thing left is the person to be punished. If a family doesn't care about two families, just take them away. Chen Beiyuan smiled and nodded. As for the look in his brother-in-law's eyes asking for help? Sorry, I can't see it. Bai Yuza howled crazily, like a pig about to be killed during the new year. He was dragged outside by his own sister. Brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. Help me. Help me. Life is at stake. Life is at stake. When you leave this door, you may not be able to see me. Brother-in-law. You are one of your own. Your own. I am your brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law. Chen Beiyuan watched with a smile as his brother-in-law was dragged away like a slaughtered pig, and he did not forget to wave goodbye. Even if the doorstep of his house was torn apart by his brother-in-law who had a strong desire for survival, he would not even frown. After the Bai family's beating, his brother-in-law couldn't escape. I'm afraid it will be difficult to see him without ten days and a half. Suddenly, his expression moved slightly, and he felt something strange. Zuo Wang Dao Jing issued a slight warning, and his waving movements stopped for a moment. A soft cry suddenly appeared from behind. What a boy! You were able to spot me. A familiar voice appears. The moment he heard the sound, Chun Bei Yuan's tight body suddenly relaxed. He turned around and saw a middle-aged man quietly appearing behind him. Surprisingly, it was his father Chin Juching. I have guests coming tonight, so I'm a little late. I'm really sorry. Chapter 83, Part 1 The surprise on Chen Juching's face was not fake. You know, with his strength after breaking through, even strong men at the same level may not be able to detect his approach. But my son is nothing more than a fifth grade war commander, and he can actually detect it. This is a bit scary. However, when I think about Chen Bei Yuan's incredible record and talent, it's not so hard to accept. Compared to his father Chen Zhiching's surprise, Chen Bei Yuan immediately noticed that the father in front of him had changed differently than before, becoming more unpredictable, as if every move he made could trigger the power of heaven and earth. Could it be that? Chen Bei Yuan's expression changed, with a hint of joy in his eyes. Dad, you? It's not convenient to talk here. Let's find another place. Chen Zhiching smiled and shook his head. As he finished speaking, the surrounding scene began to blur, as if it had been forcibly moved by some terrifying force. Swish. The two people who were supposed to be in the inner courtyard disappeared out of thin air and appeared in a secret room. Shifting shadows? Chen Beiyuan's pupil shrank, and he looked around with some surprise. He instantly thought of the legendary divine ability involving space. It's not shifting shadows, it's just some methods of using the power of the field. Da. Chen Zheqing looked at the surprised sun in front of him, raised the corners of his mouth, and said with some pride, Field? This is an area that only the 8th grade war emperor can master. The joy on Chen Beiyuan's face was finally uncontrollable. Dad, you succeeded? Well, thanks to your previous enlightenment pill, I finally took this step and came into contact with the power of the realm and reached the quasi-emperor. As long as I can successfully condense my realm, I can break through 8th grade war emperor. The corners of Chen Zheqing's mouth rose, with excitement and emotion on his face. He never thought that because of his son's pill, he would break through the cultivation barrier that had been bound for many years, come into contact with the power of the domain, and become a quasi-emperor. Quasi-emperor is an extremely vague realm between the 7th grade war emperor and the 8th grade war emperor. He belongs to the category of 7th grade war emperor, but he also has access to the power of the domain, 
belonging to the 8th Great War Emperor, and can use it roughly. A quasi-emperor that has initially come into contact with the power of the realm is enough to easily suppress 10 peak war emperors. This is a qualitative breakthrough, almost equivalent to the reserve force of the 8th Great War Emperor. With Chen Zhiqing's age and his own potential, it can be said that it is only a matter of time before he breaks through to the 8th Great War Emperor. By then, the Donghua Chen family's overall strength will be able to reach a higher level. Chen Beiyuan is also sincerely happy for his father's breakthrough. One Wu Dao Pill, exchanged for one Quasi Emperor. This deal is definitely a huge profit. Beiyuan, do you still have that pill in your hand? Chen Zhiqing was a little excited. If he could get a few more Enlightenment Dao Pills, his speed of condensing the field would also speed up, which would also help him break through the 8th Great War Emperor faster. In response, Chun Beiyuan just shook his head. The system's rewards are not fixed, and he doesn't know when he will get the Enlightenment Dao Pill. He gave the remaining one directly to his father. That's right. It's a blessing to get one of such a divine thing. If you want to get more, I'm afraid you'd be too greedy. A wry smile appeared on Chan Zheqing's lips, feeling that he was indeed a little too greedy. Even the 8th Grade War Emperor would be tempted by the divine pill that can enhance one's understanding a hundred times. From beginning to end, he never asked Chen Beiyuan about the origin of Wu Dao Pill, as if he was deliberately avoiding it. Being able to have a divine object like Enlightenment Dao Pill exist, Beiyuan is probably getting an incredible opportunity. Since Beiyuan didn't want to mention it, he, as an old man, wouldn't ask intentionally. This is a kind of respect between father and son. My own son gave this divine pill to him. He is also greedy and wants to know the truth. Is he suspected of trying to steal the opportunity from his son? Regarding his father's silent respect, Chan Beiyuan felt a warmth in his heart. At the same time, he also had an idea and asked, Dad, does the Chin family have anyone in Miao territory? Next, if you want to support and be you to control the Gu clan, and then control the entire Miao territory, you will definitely need a lot of help. In the final analysis, he is just the young master of the Chen family. Although he can mobilize some of the family's power, there are still some hidden forces that cannot be mobilized, and some special things are not clear. Today, the real head of the Chen family is still his father, Chen Zheqing. Miao territory? Do you want to interfere in that place? The situation in that place is special. The people are strong, major forces are entrenched, and the interests are too complicated. Many people who have committed crimes are hiding there. Sometimes, even the Donghua Empire's orders in the past were not always easy to implement. Chen Zhiqing was stunned for a moment, obviously a little surprised, then he thought for a moment and said slowly, over there, the Chen family does have some, small business. The largest black market over there is supported by the Chen family, which specializes in selling junk items that have been eliminated by the imperial military. Sure enough, the Chen family also has its own connections in Miao territory. What's more, he sells arms. Although Chen Beiyuan was pleasantly surprised, he didn't feel too surprised. Longting Group one of the world's top 10 arms dealers is the Chun family's industry. Most of the weapons and equipment supplies for the Donghua Empire are supplied by the designated Longting Group. It can be said that the Chen family is not only the leader of the imperial military, but also the largest arms dealer in the empire. Compared with the Chun family's business in overseas countries, the arms business in Miaojiang is indeed a small business. Over the years, many people have been eyeing the Miao border area, but unfortunately, no one has succeeded. If you have an idea and want to try it, I will make the people in Miao territory listen to your command. Just when the Chin family and his son were talking about the Miao border plan, Bai Yuza, who was forcibly dragged back to Bai's house, was being hung up and whipped severely. Ah, 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 ah. Nyezon, you are allowed to associate with those unscrupulous people all day long. There is no good thing about those bullies. Ah, 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 ah. You still dare to scream? Do you still have the nerve to scream? The louder you scream, the harder I will hit you. I must give you a little more memory today. You've done so many things, and you still have to wipe your ass from us, and you still have the nerve to scream? Bain Yun showed no mercy. If the whip in his hand was broken, he would replace it with a new one. A big family has big family rules, and it is indispensable to receive a spanking. He almost got into big trouble by letting someone act as a gunman for no reason, so he must be given some time to remember. While Bai Yuza was being beaten, Bai Ruowe also went out to do errands. At this moment, the dudes from each family have just connected their hands and feet, as well as the birds below. As a result, people from several houses were quickly blocked by the mysterious beast, and their hands and feet were broken again, as well as the newborn birds. However, this time it was a real ferocious beast. The Donghua Bai family is not called a beast-controlling family for nothing. If you dare to use the Bai family as a gunman, you will definitely take revenge. Chapter 84, Part 1 Bai Ruawe took back the ice and snow demon fox, ignored the howling figures behind her, and looked in a certain direction with cold eyes. At this moment, she is no longer as easy to talk to as she was in front of Chen Beiyuan. 
Next time you dare to involve Beiyuan and Xiaobai, I will make you pay a heavy price. After successfully obtaining a black market manpower hidden in Miao territory, Chun Beiyuan finally asked the doubts in his heart. That was the issue of his engagement with Bai Ruawe. Six years ago, why did Mr. Chan choose the Bai family? You know, back then, even the imperial family was interested in marrying into the Qin family. In fact, there are several aristocratic families that are much better than the Bai family. But in the end, Mr. Chan still chose the Bai family. This made him a little curious. You want to know this? Chun Zhuqing raised his eyebrows, as if he was surprised by the question. Immediately, his expression became ambiguous again. He raised his eyebrows and said mysteriously, You should ask the old man this question originally. That's the engagement he made for you. However, if you want to know, I can tell you the reason. First, when the old man broke through to the 8th grade war emperor, he got some help from the Bai family. As you know, he is famous for being nostalgic for old friendships and wanting to pay back favors he owes. Secondly, this is related to the old man's romantic debt. Well, before his death, his old lover held his hand and asked him personally. He really couldn't refuse, so he agreed. This can even be related to my old man's romantic debt. Chin Beiyuan directly ignored the first item and focused on the second item. What's the situation? Isn't Mr. Chen famous for his innocence? I have been married to an ordinary woman my whole life, and I have never married again. Why does an old lover show up? However, Chan Jiching's next words instantly overturned Chan Beiyuan's impression of his Mr. Chen. It's normal for you to be young and not understand some things. Let me just say this. Even though you look so lucky now, the old man's luck was even more exaggerated than yours back then. I don't know how many romantic debts he left behind. Of course, although the old man is merciful, there is still a bottom line if he doesn't save seeds. However, on the day of the old man's wedding, most of the top families in the entire empire burst into tears. Digging, is there such a thing? The corner of Chan Beiyuan's mouth twitched slightly. Although his father did not elaborate, he could already roughly guess the general situation. I thought my old man only had one or two old lovers, but this is a whole bunch of them. So, the old man used me to pay off his debt. Anu, who was lying on Chan Beiyuan's head, didn't seem to pay attention to the conversation between the father and son. But judging from the way his little head shook from time to time and the little tail that kept flapping, it was obvious that he was eavesdropping. By family. By Ruawe came to the by family ancestral hall alone and walked to a plaque. The plaque was clearly engraved with, by Shinro. This is the second young lady of the Bai family who never married. She is also Mr. Bai's sister and Bai Ruawei's aunt. Bai Ruawei stretched out her hand and touched the plaque in front of her, with a look of nostalgia in her eyes. It seems to recall the good times of childhood. Auntie, I'm here to see you. I want to see Beiyuan today. The little one back then has now grown as tall as me and has become more mature than before. Back then, when you took eight-year-old me to Chin's house, you pointed at him and told me that that was my future husband. I pinched his little face and he bit my hand, but he probably doesn't remember it now. Bai Ruawei murmured to herself, telling the past events of that year, with a nostalgic smile on her face. Especially when Chen Beiyuan was mentioned, the smile on his lips was even harder to stop. I'm afraid that even Chen Beiyuan doesn't know that the first time he and Bai Ruawei met was not six years ago, but 18 years ago. Bai Ruawei, who was only eight years old at the time, met Chen Beiyuan who was just born. She still clearly remembers what her aunt, who loved her most, told her at that time. This is what the old bastard owes me. He owes me, and let his grandson pay back the debt he owes. Ruawe, he will be your husband from now on. You have to protect him, and don't let other bad women take him away. 18 years. Bai Ruawe almost watched Chen Beiyuan grow from an ignorant baby step by step to the young master of the Chun family today. She has been waiting for him for 18 years. For 18 years, she had been watching his every move almost all the time. She had loved him to her core for a long time. She had long regarded him as her own. Royal Palace. Jiang Yunhua, dressed in a holy phoenix skirt, was like a proud phoenix, walking in the harem. The surrounding maids and servants bowed their heads one after another and did not dare to stop her. Obviously, the status of His Highness the Sixth Prince of the Empire is extremely high. Soon, Jiang Yunhua came to a magnificent and magnificent palace. This is the Queen Mother's Palace belonging to the Donghua Empire. The Supreme Emperor died of illness many years ago and now the queen mother has the highest status in the entire harem. Even the supreme emperor of the Donghua Empire would come to pay his respects every once in a while. Huar, are you here? A noble and majestic, beautiful woman looked at her granddaughter who was bowing respectfully in front of her, and a seductive smile appeared on her stunning face. Although there are traces of time in the corners of her eyes, the pressure brought by the years of pampering is enough to cover up everything. She looked at the young and beautiful Jiang Yunhua in front of her, with a trace of nostalgia deep in her eyes, as if she was seeing herself when she was young. Have you met him? 
Time flies and half a month has passed. In the past half month, Chen Beiyuan has been practicing in addition to daily practice. Under the guidance of his father Chen Zheqing, he gradually took over some affairs of the Chen family and began to fulfill his obligations as the young master of the Chen family. Before, he spent most of his time practicing and rarely had contact with the people under his command. Now, nature has made up for it. Some things are necessary. Always let the people below know who the master they will be loyal to in the future. At the same time, Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, also began to come into contact with some powerful children through Lin Xiao's relationship and medical skills and accumulated his own connections. Although, during this period of time, Lin Xiao's behavior became more and more weird, and he often touched him. But for the sake of his own future, Lin Xiao still chose to endure it. Chapter 85, Part 1 Brother Lin, your medical skills are really amazing. That little bastard Qin Huiren is famous for being a weak man. I didn't expect that after you gave him a few injections, he would turn into a powerful and strong man. The way he looked at you just now was like looking at a god. Brother Lin, there seems to be something wrong with the way that little girl from the Qin family looks at you. I can tell at a glance that she is not a good person. Don't stay with her for too long in the future. Brother Lin, how do you maintain your skin? It's white and tender. It's better than those women's. It feels more tactile. You have to teach me when you have time. Brother Lin. Lin Xiao resisted the urge to curse and wanted to reach back his right hand that was held in Lin Xiao's hand and touched randomly. But Lin Xiao didn't seem to notice it. He held on tightly and touched her like a woman, which made his skin crawl. This damn double plug. Lin Xiao couldn't help but curse loudly in his heart, wishing to chop this little bastard to death. After spending more than half a month together, he finally understood. Lin Xiao, this dandy, didn't know if he was stimulated by something, but he actually targeted him. This is a bit of a dig. I regard you as my brother, but you have evil thoughts about me? If Lin Xiao hadn't introduced him to many people from wealthy families during this period, allowing him to gradually gain a reputation as a miracle doctor in the upper class society and accumulate some contacts that would help his future development, he would have thought so long ago. Falling out. Now, he can only tolerate it for the time being. Those who achieve great things don't stick to trivial matters, and they will pass by being patient. Moreover, at this moment, he still wanted to ask for help from Lin Xiao. Xiao, can you please help me with my suspension from Donghua University? Lin Xiao suppressed his disgust and forced a false smile on his face. As the number one university in the empire, Donghua Academy has terrifying human resources. Many big names came from this academy. The head of the Qin family, Qin Zheqing, the head of the Lin family, Lin Xufeng, and the head of the Bai family, Bai Yinyun, were all among them. Therefore, the status of Donghua student still has a lot of benefits for him. However, with his current status, it would be difficult for Donghua Academy to revoke his punishment. Unless the behemoth of the Lin family spoke up, well, it's not a big problem, but it's still a bit troublesome. After all, it involves a lot of things. I think it's almost getting dark. How about we find a place to chat? Lin Xiao looked at the sun hanging high in the sky and suddenly said, Okay. Lin Xiao's face was slightly stiff, and the fist of his other hand was clenched tightly. There seemed to be murderous intent surging deep in his eyes, but in the end he turned into forbearance and squeezed out a smile on his face. Little bastard, I hope you won't bully others too much. Chin family. Chin Beiyuan soaked naked in the blood pool, enjoying the restlessness and comfort brought by the hot beast's blood, relieving the fatigue of the day. During this period of time, in addition to practicing, he also followed his father to the third theater of the empire several times and began to try to get in touch with the military power of the Qin family. Is this the transfer of power? It seems that my father plans to focus most of his attention on the field of cohesion and breaking through to the eighth grade war emperor. That's right. Strong cultivation is the foundation for establishing a life and settling down, and strength is the basis for maintaining power. If the Qin family can have one more eighth grade war emperor, it will be a new world. Chen Beiyuan knows very well that his old man has now become quasi-emperor. As long as you take one more step, you will be the top powerhouse. In this case, nothing is as important as the breakthrough. Necessary transfer of rights is also required. Next, he, the young master of the Chen family, has to help shoulder some of the family's burdens. There is no way, while enjoying family rights, he also has the obligation to protect the family. If the old man can break through the 8th grade war emperor, plus the old man, then Chen Jiaming will have two war emperors. You know, even the imperial royal family Jiang Jiaming only has two 8th grade war emperors. However, the Jiang family is able to maintain its position as the number one family in the empire, as stable as a mountain, and the power hidden in the dark is absolutely terrifying. Otherwise, the Jiang family would have been picked out long ago. You know, there are many people who covet the Jiang family's status. In the original work, the imperial royal family couldn't just watch the fall of the Qin family. In all likelihood, they also had a hand in it, secretly seizing part of the Qin family's military power. There's nothing I can do about it. 
He holds the greatest military power in the empire, and everyone will be jealous when he sees it. Chun Beiyuan's eyes were dark as he stroked the huge, sleeping dragon head in his arms, seeming to be thinking about something. During this time, he fed Anu, the silly dragon, a dragon blood dao fruit. Dragon blood dao fruit is a dragon race treasure specially supplied to young dragons through their infancy. It goes without saying that there are benefits to this silly dragon like Anu. However, I don't know if it was a side effect. After eating dragon blood dao fruit, this stupid dragon would often yawn while playing with it and then lie directly on top of him and fall asleep. Chen Beiyuan knew very well that this was Anu digesting the energy of the fruit in his body. In just over 10 days, the body of this silly dragon has reached a length of nearly 100 meters, and its combat power continues to soar. Even the entire blood pool could hardly bear her huge size. Now she has almost reached the peak of the sixth grade beast. Once the dragon blood dao fruit is completely digested, you can definitely reach the peak of the sixth grade beast. Regarding Anu's huge changes and breakthrough speed, Chun Beiyuan could only lament the terrifying talent of the two evil dragons in his body. The legendary bloody dragon emperor is indeed extraordinary. It is indeed a terrifying existence that once defended two top dragon emperors from falling behind. And he was naturally happy to see Anu's rapid growth. After all, Anu is a trump card for him in the future. Once he breaks through the eight grade beasts, Anu will definitely be the top existence among the eight grade beasts. Even the Donghua Empire couldn't find a few war emperors who could compete head on. However, other than that, his other arrangements have not stopped. Miao Zhang's stealing plan is going ahead. It just so happens that Yu's strength has almost recovered. She can first go to the Miao border to lurk and win people's hearts. The 8th grade Emperor Gu must be in hand as soon as possible. The Donghua Empire seems to be calm, but secretly it contains many treacherous conspiracies. I need the power to sweep everything away. The Chun family is destined to be destroyed. It will never happen. He slowly turned his head and looked straight at the cold and charming figure of the young woman behind him. The flames burning with ambition in those domineering eyes shocked and be you, and she felt a little restless in her body. Madam, it's time for you to move. Chapter 86, Part 1 Facing Chun Beiyuan's hot gaze, and Bi Yu knew very well that she had no room for bargaining, and the trip to Miao territory was inevitable. Moreover, deep in her heart, the flame of revenge was burning all the time. However, before leaving, she still had one last thought. Master, before leaving, I want to take another look at them in secret. If there was anyone else in this city whom she couldn't worry about, it was her daughter and husband. Can. Chun Beiyuan agreed directly without any hesitation. He is not a cold person, and he is not so ruthless towards his subordinates. Since Nbi Yu still had worries and thoughts, he would reassure her. Nbi Yu's eyes flashed with joy. She obviously didn't expect Chun Beiyuan to agree so quickly. She thought she would be rejected, and was prepared for rejection. Master, when can I? Without further delay now, Chen Beiyuan stood up from the blood pool. His strong body was instantly exposed to the air. The strong smell of blood filled his body and formed a layer of blood scab. His eyes suddenly erupted with a strange purple light, and a terrifying spiritual power was instantly released, directly covering the sleeping huge blood dragon in front of him. Anu's body shook, and he slowly opened a gap. Immediately after feeling Chen Beiyuan's familiar aura, he did not resist, and directly turned into a line of blood light that entered his eyebrows turning into a bright and dazzling blood dragon mark. Deep in his soul, a little bloody dragon was sleeping soundly and yawned to himself, sleeping even more soundly. During this period, Chen Beiyuan entered the Sutra Pavilion of the Chen family and found a secret method that could bring the dragon race pet into the soul. Hidden Dragon Method Although he and Anu did not sign a blood oath contract or establish the title of master and servant, they relied on the special connection between them that was almost blood connection. As long as Anu doesn't resist, it's not difficult to take it into the body. This is undoubtedly a lot more convenient for Chen Beiyuan. As for bringing this silly dragon, Anu, into the depths of his soul, are there any risks? Sorry, his fighting spirit abyss is also inside. From the beginning to the end, Chen Beiyuan likes to plan and nip all potential threats in the bud. Change. And Biyu's face was slightly red, and she stepped forward to tear off the blood scab on her body, served him, and put on clothes. A large group of people were blocking the door of the Long family's ancestral home, forcibly surrounding the lonely and weak Long Ruabing. Most of these people were members of the Long family who had gone their separate ways when the disaster struck, and most of them were Long Ruabing's elders. At this moment, these so-called elders had ferocious looks on their faces, with spittle flying around them, and the vicious words in their mouths, which almost drowned Long Ruabing. Ruabing, now that your father is unconscious and unable to perform his duties as the head of the family, we have re-elected a new head of the family. Everyone agrees to let the respected third uncle take over as the head of the family. 
You must hand over this ancestral home of the Long family. This is the property of our Long family. You are still a daughter and will always get married. We will never allow you to occupy the only property of the Long family. Ruabing, we have already negotiated a good marriage for you. Young Master Chu has always been thinking about you and is willing to hire you as his concubine in his own name. This is your great blessing. The Chu family is a first-class family in Yinjing, with the powerful power of the seventh grade war emperor. Young Master Chu is not only graceful and handsome, but also the future legal heir of the Chu family. If you follow him, you will be lucky. Just wait and enjoy the blessings. We are all members of the same bloodline. We are still your elders, and we cannot harm you. We just want you to live a better life in the future. Faced with the kind words and advice from these so-called elders and relatives in front of me, Long Ruabing's cold and charming face flashed with a trace of sarcasm, and he sneered again and again without paying any attention to it. Good shit. This is clearly to bully her because her father is unconscious, her mother has mysteriously disappeared, she is isolated and helpless, and she wants to be destitute. Moreover, these guys who are called elders not only want to exterminate the family and take away the Long family's ancestral home, but also want to sell her at a good price. How could she agree? This ancestral house is an inheritance passed down from my grandfather's generation. My father transferred it to my name many years ago. It has nothing to do with you people. You can't take it away from me, and don't expect me to let you do it. I'm warning you, I am still a student of Donghua Academy, and behind me is Sacred Land, the highest academy in the empire. Lung Ruabing's starry eyes swept over the long family members in front of him without giving in at all. Immediately, she looked at the obese man next to her who weighed more than 300 kilograms and was as long as a human-shaped wild boar, with no concealed disgust in her eyes. This person is clearly the handsome, handsome and handsome young Master Chu among the Long family. You want to sell me? Don't even think about it. If you want to sell it, sell it to your mother. Long Ruabing was obviously angry at the so-called elder in front of him, and he swore harshly. Long Ruabing, you unkind beast, how dare you talk to the elders like this? You unfilial thing, Long Alfing really gave birth to a good daughter. Evil. You are an evil. The reason why the Long family has declined to what it is today is because of you, the broom star. Your father is unconscious because of you, and your mother, in all likelihood, eloped with a wild man. Seeing that Long Ruabing still dared to resist and insult them, the surrounding Long family members instantly became furious and started yelling curses. A young member of the Long family instantly became angry and was about to slap Long Ruabing, but was quickly stopped by the people around him. Nowadays, young Master Chu is still here. If it is broken, it will not be sold at a good price. Moreover, Long Ruabing's status as a Donghua student also makes many people fearful. Donghua Academy is the number one academy in the empire, and behind it is the imperial family. Shut up, everyone. At this moment, the third uncle who was elected as the new head of the family waved his hand to stop the noise around him and walked out slowly with a cane. A pair of cold triangular eyes looked straight at Long Ruabing in front of him. Ruabing, although you are still a student at Donghua Academy, don't forget that I am now the head of the Long family and your elder. Your father is unconscious now. As the head of the family, I am your guardian. I have the right to go to Donghua Academy in the name of the head of the family and submit the withdrawal procedures for you. As the saying goes, old ginger is still spicy. As soon as the third uncle took action, he tore Long Ruabing's biggest talisman cleanly. You. Long Ruabing's face suddenly turned pale, his body trembled, and he looked at the third uncle in front of him in disbelief. This was the elder who loved her the most before. Now, do you want her to die? However, the third uncle didn't even look at him. He turned to look at the eldest son of the Chu family. The viciousness on his face disappeared instantly, like an old dog looking at its owner, with a face full of flattery. Young Master Chu, don't worry. Once I have trained this ignorant girl, I will personally deliver her to your house. For the third uncle, family affection is nothing, interests are real. In the past, Lung Ruabing was loved by Chan Beiyuan, so she was the treasure of the Long family. Naturally, he had to lick an old face as a sign of goodwill. Now, the situation is different, so you can only sell it in exchange for your own interests. Very good. As long as people let me take it away, the things I promised before will not be less. Young Master Chu raised his head with an arrogant look, immediately revealing the layers of fat on his chin. He didn't even look at the old dog in front of him. His green bean eyes looked greedily at Long Ruabing, who looked desperate. Snapped. Snapped. Snapped at this moment, crisp claps suddenly appeared from behind everyone, immediately breaking the deadlock. Okay. 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 I didn't expect to see such a good show. Chapter 87, Part 1. Okay. 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 I didn't expect to see such a good show. A slightly playful voice appeared from behind everyone. Lung Ruabing, with desperate eyes, heard this voice that was almost familiar to his bones. His body trembled, 
His eyes revealed incredible and uncontrollable surprise, and he stared blankly ahead. Seeing that some reckless people dared to come out to disrupt the situation, the surrounding Long family members suddenly became furious. This was clearly a mockery of them. Even the third uncle and young master Chu's expressions turned gloomy. Everyone turned around and looked, among them, Long Aoshuan, a middle-aged man with a fiery personality, started shouting curses at the top of his voice before he could see the figure clearly. As the biological son of his third uncle, as long as he gets the ancestral home, sells Lung Ruabing, and his biological father, everything will belong to him. Nowadays, if someone dares to meddle in other people's business, it is obvious that they are going to have trouble with him, the future head of the Lung family. It's that dog with no eyes. Mr. Chun. When the arrogant Long Aoshuan saw the person coming clearly, his sharp duck voice instantly became frightened, like a duck being strangled by the neck. His face turned pale, and he felt his legs were weak. Unable to stand firmly, he fell directly to the ground. Long Aoshuan was showing such an unsightly performance in front of him, but the surrounding Long family members did not have the slightest intention of ridiculing them. Because at this moment, they are not much different from Long Aoshuan. When they saw the coming people, they were all full of ghosts. Even the third uncle and that young Master Chu were the same. Master Chun. Master Chun. Master Chun. Chen Beiyuan appeared behind everyone at some point, with a smile on his face, watching the farce in front of him with interest. He was no stranger to this kind of thing. He had seen a lot in his previous life. It's nothing more than eating homeless people and eating steamed buns with human blood. A helpless woman, whose father has become a vegetative state, whose mother has disappeared, and who has no one to protect her, is undoubtedly the best person to bully. Even if he is dead, no one will care. At this moment, next to him, there was a figure wearing a black cloak, covering his figure and making his face unclear. Compared to his calmness, the cloaked figure clenched his fists tightly and his breathing became rapid. Looking at the greedy long family members in front of him with cold eyes, he wanted to cut them into pieces. Chun Beiyuan naturally noticed and Biyu's uncontrollable killing intent, but he didn't seem surprised. In the original work, Long Ruabing is definitely the person and Biyu cares about the most. In this regard, even Long Alfing cannot compare. The Miaojiang Gu tribe is a matrilineal tribe, and every heir is a woman. For them, men are just tools for reproduction. What's interesting is that, I don't know if it's a special characteristic of the Gu clan, but almost all of their offspring are female babies. The Long family members want to take action against Long Ruabing. It has already touched the reverse scale of an Biyu, the mother. Chen Beiyuan asked an Biyu to work for him and promised to ensure the safety of her daughter, so he naturally had to give her an explanation. He glanced at the frightened people in front of him. Before anyone could explain, he grinned, clapped his hands, and said in a kind tone, You can tell at a glance that Dao Emperor's pillar of talent is so cruel to his own people, and he must be even more cruel to outsiders. I'm afraid it would be a pity to stay here. Let's see. The Empire's frontline battlefields are very short of people recently. All of you talented people should go to the frontline to clear up Wasteland. There are more alien ferocious beasts there, so there is room for you to show your talents. The Empire's recruitment order will be sent to you soon. Recruit them to open up Wasteland on the front lines? That means being cannon fodder. To make food for those alien ferocious beasts? This is not going to cost them their lives. The faces of the Long family present turned pale instantly, and many of those with low endurance were so frightened that they peed on the spot. No one would think that Chen Beiyuan was joking. The current leader of the Imperial military is the Chen family. The military recruits some special talents to go to the front line? It makes sense. It makes sense. Very consistent with the procedure. Not even the royal family would say anything. As for whether the parties concerned will have any opinions? What? You are not patriotic. Master Chen, Master Chen, I was wrong. I was wrong. I didn't know Ruabing was still yours. Give me a break. Give me a break. Mr. Chen, I have a 35-year-old mother and a child who is waiting to be fed. I can't die. Master Chen, have mercy. Master Chun, have mercy. Master Chun, Master Chun, I'm over 80 and I really can't stand the trouble. Ruabing, Ruabing, please help me show mercy to Master Chun. I was deceived by the bullshit told by that old dog of my third uncle. Heart. Ruabing, I am your uncle. Your father and I are brothers. Please help your uncle plead with Mr. Chun. The Long family, who had been arrogant and vicious just now, burst into tears and howls. They never dreamed that Chin Beiyuan would appear here. If he had known that Chin Beiyuan was interested in Long Ruabing, he would not dare to sell Long Ruabing to him, even if he killed them. In an instant, everyone's intestines turned green with regret. At this moment, their first reaction was to beg for mercy, hoping to survive. Some who responded quickly even wanted to run away immediately. However, just when Chun Beiyuan finished speaking, figures wearing black robes and holding shackles appeared quietly around them, surrounding them. Click, click, 
A few who tried to escape had their limbs and necks broken and were thrown to the ground, where they died with their eyes open. The leading man in black robe had a cold voice, like a monster without any emotion. Disobey military orders. Those who want to be deserters, behead. The rest put on shackles and are sent to the front line. Long Ruabing watched the scene in front of him in silence. The Long family members who were so cruel just now are now like a group of frightened sheep, being pressed to the ground and rubbed by those men in black robes, forcibly put on shackles and dragged away. Anyone who wanted to resist or escape would have their necks broken on the spot without any mercy. Such ruthless tactics instantly frightened everyone present. The third uncle, who had a cold expression on his face just now, kowtowed crazily towards her and howled. Ruabing, third uncle is wrong. Third uncle is wrong. Please beg for mercy from Mr. Chun. Please beg for mercy from Mr. Chun. Third uncle loved you the most before? Snapped. Maybe he felt that his third uncle was too noisy. The iron shackles in the hands of the man in black robes responsible for arresting him were smashed down hard, instantly smashing a deep pit into his old face, blood and flesh splattered, and an old tooth was shattered on the ground. Woo woo woo. The bloody third uncle stretched out his hand towards Long Ruabing, but he couldn't make the slightest sound. He was forcefully dragged away like an old dog with broken teeth. Chapter 88, Part 1. Snapped. Even the so-called young master Chu could not escape the fate of being pinned to the ground and put on fine iron shackles. The huge body of nearly 300 kilograms was several times larger than that of an ordinary person. The fine iron shackles were pinched into his neck, and his small green bean-like eyes suddenly widened. He felt like he couldn't even breathe. Somewhat difficult. These fine iron shackles are specially prepared for cultivators who have committed crimes. Once put on, the entire body's cultivation will be tightly sealed and the physical body will be suppressed. The eldest son of the Chu family no longer looked as greedy as before. His fat, round face was full of fear and despair, like a fat pig about to be served to the banquet. Mr. Chin, misunderstanding, misunderstanding. I didn't know that Miss Long was still yours. Otherwise, I wouldn't dare offend you even if I had ten nerves. It's all those bastards from the Long family who are doing this on purpose. It's all on purpose. Young Master Chin, Young Master Chun, I am from the Chu family, and I am from the second Young Master Chin. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. I am willing to kowtow to Miss Long and apologize, kowtow. At this moment, Chu Suiyuan was almost scared out of his mind. As long as he knew that Mr. Chen was still involved with this woman, he wouldn't dare to have any idea even if he had a hundred courages. At this moment, he quickly moved his biggest supporter out, hoping to spare a dog's life. Second young master Qin? Dong Hua Qin family. Another top family. However, the man in black robe who was responsible for the attack did not show any mercy. Instead, he punched him hard. The round face that was so fat and oily was flattened immediately, and blood gushed out like a fountain. Out boom, boom, boom. After several iron punches in a row, the Chu family's young man's breathing became weak, and his fat body kept twitching. The man in black robe doesn't care about any bullshit. The second young master of Qin family? They are members of the Qin family. They receive the Qin family's salary, and food and drink are provided by the Qin family. Soon. The Long family and the eldest son of the Chu family who were present were dragged away by the men in black robes. Their next destiny will be to be sent to the front lines to open up wasteland and contribute to the empire. As for the corpses of the deserters on the ground and the bloodstains everywhere, don't worry, someone will come and take care of it. Long Ruabing stared blankly at the bloody scene in front of him, breathing in the rich smell of blood in the air, holding the corners of his clothes with both hands, and his heart was beating wildly, as if he had not yet come to his senses. At her feet, there was a corpse with a broken head and split brains. Just now, the third uncle's son went crazy and rushed towards her, but his head was blown off by the man in black robe on the spot. Everything happened so fast. It was so close that she didn't even react. A moment ago, she was still being threatened by people from the Long family who wanted to sell it. The next moment, Chen Beiyuan was like a magic weapon descending from the sky. With just one word, he swept away the people of the Long family like garbage. The eldest son of the Chu family who coveted her was beaten to the point where he had no energy left. Then he was sent to the frontline battlefield, where he might have to be used as a bait. Is this the power of power? With just one sentence, you can change the fate of countless people. Long Ruabing stared blankly at the familiar figure, becoming obsessed for a moment. Isn't this what she always wanted? From the beginning to the end, Chun Beiyuan's expression did not change at all, and there was still a faint smile on his face. No matter how bloody and miserable the scene in front of him was, he could not be moved. Only when the leader in black robe saluted him, he nodded slightly. Looking at Chen Beiyuan blankly, she subconsciously ignored the cloaked figure next to her. She didn't realize at all that the cloaked figure was her long-lost mother. And Biyu. Damn it. Lin Xiao, 
who was hiding in the dark, clenched his fists and took in everything in front of him, with an expression of reluctance on his face. Why? Why? It's this damn Chin Beiyuan again. During this period of time, he was naturally aware of Long Ruabing's difficult situation. Even if the Long family is hooking up with the Chu family's eldest son, he knows everything about it. The reason why he has not taken action and deliberately added fuel to the flames is that he hopes to appear at the last moment and save Lung Ruabing from the fire and water. In this way, he could gain Lung Ruabing's gratitude to the greatest extent and even get her body. Although, he had betrayed Lung Ruabing many times before. But in his heart, there is still love and guilt for Lung Ruabing. He has already planned everything. As long as he can succeed, he will definitely win the beauty's favor. But at the last moment, Chen Beiyuan, that damn bastard, got in first. No one will bother you anymore, Chun Beiyuan said calmly. Although this time, even if he didn't come, nothing would happen to Long Ruabing. After all, he had sent someone to protect him, but it wasn't Biyu who wanted to come over and take a look before leaving. Then he came here in person for the sake of an in Biyu's heart. Moreover, his appearance was undoubtedly a silent shock, enough that no one would dare to disturb Long Ruabing easily in the future. Now that he has done what he promised, he will naturally not stay here any longer. Gone. He patted in Biyu who was wearing a black cloak next to him, and prepared to take the people away. And Biyu's body trembled. Under the black cloak, her face and expression could not be seen clearly. Those cold and charming eyes looked at her daughter's figure with a hint of complexity. She is not suitable to meet Long Ruabing at this moment. After all, her identity with Chen Beiyuan is a bit too awkward at the moment. Do you want to tell your daughter that you are a pawn for this man who once pursued him? Perhaps, all this can only be explained by waiting for a suitable opportunity. However, just as she was about to leave with Chan Beiyuan, etc. Lung Ruabing's gaze lingered on the figure in the black cloak for a moment, feeling an inexplicable sense of familiarity, but he couldn't figure out the source of this familiarity. Maybe it's an illusion. This should be Beiyuan's subordinate. She moved her eyes away from the cloaked man and looked at Chin Beiyuan, who stopped and turned around. His face seemed a little unnatural, with a slight blush on his cheeks. She tried her best to appear calm, but her voice was trembling as she said, Beiyuan, since you're here, would you like to come in and sit down? Come in and sit down? Chin Beiyuan's eyes instantly became playful, and he took a deep look at her. Then, looking at an Biyu who was a little stiff beside him, a meaningful smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Since people have invited me so warmly, they are so proactive. It would be rude of him to refuse. He glanced meaningfully in the direction where Lin Xiao was hiding. That's fine. Chapter 89, Part 1 The beauty warmly invites her, but if she refuses again, there will really be a problem. It's not impossible to go in and sit down. Madam, do you want to go in and sit together? Chin Beiyuan lowered his head and whispered softly in an Biyu's ear, like an invitation from the abyss. An Biyu's body trembled, and the shadow under the black cloak covered her appearance. Her expression could not be seen clearly, but she was trembling slightly, and her fists were clenched and turned white. If it's too difficult, forget it. Just wait for me outside. The corners of Chin Beiyuan's mouth curved in an evil way, and his deep eyes seemed to see through her inner tangle. He patted her shoulder and walked towards the Long family. Hidden in the dark, Lin Xiao watched helplessly as Chin Beiyuan actually agreed to Long Ruabing's invitation. He walked straight inside and even hugged Long Ruabing forcefully. His eyes suddenly widened. His whole body was shaking with anger and his breathing was rapid. What made him even more shocked and angry was that Long Ruabing, who was hugged domineeringly, didn't resist at all. Instead, he looked obedient, with a hint of shyness and infatuation in his eyes. The woman he loves the most is now in the arms of another man, with a shy and submissive expression. I haven't even touched it before, so I just started using it. No. Lin Zhao's eyes were red and almost bleeding. What made him even more furious was that Chen Beiyuan seemed to glance vaguely in his direction, with a hint of ridicule and amusement in his eyes. It seemed that the other party had already known that he was hiding in this corner. This is simply a demonstration against him, humiliating him, trampling on him. The goddess you long for is in my arms right now. A figure of a mature lady holding a snow-white fox looked silently at the scene happening outside the Long family's ancestral home. Her body exudes a power that is friendly to all creatures, causing all creatures around her to subconsciously ignore her existence. From the beginning to the end, her eyes were fixed on the man who exuded a noble and mysterious temperament, without wavering in the slightest. Even when she saw him hugging other women, she only frowned slightly and then returned to normal. After Xiaobai's good-for-nothing brother, suffered the family abuse at home. It would be impossible for him to cultivate without ten days and a half. Naturally, I can't count on it. So, to watch Chun Beiyuan's matter, it is natural that he needs to take action personally. However, she never expected that her fiancé would give him a small surprise so soon, 
Beiyuan is just playing. You know the importance, you were right, Ari. The shadow covered her face, and her expression could not be seen clearly. She could only be seen stroking the snow white fox in her arms and mumbling to herself. The snow white fox known as Ali had begun to shiver at this moment, and the hair all over his body was a little frizzy. The kakin caressing the body was like a cold butcher knife that might fall at any time. Although she had learned about some little things about Beiyuan from Xiaobai before, she thought she could tolerate them. But hearing and seeing with your own eyes are two different things. The man I have liked for 18 years is now holding another woman's arms. Ali felt the fur on her neck suddenly tighten, almost frightening her to death on the spot, and her whole body trembled even more violently. Click. The long family door is closed. It seems that the two people who entered are actually affecting the hearts of the people outside. The atmosphere suddenly became weird, especially when one of the curtains on the roof of Long's house was drawn. The weird atmosphere reached freezing point in an instant. Regarding the situation outside, Chen Beiyuan can be said to be very insightful and aware of everything. The powerful mental power brought by Aizuo Wang Dao Jing, and the affinity between heaven and earth were enough for him to detect the strangeness and hidden existences around him. But that's more interesting, isn't it? This feeling of playing with people's hearts is really addictive. Of course, there is still a problem that needs to be solved at this moment. That is, the poison of hypocrisy in Long Ruabing's body has not yet been released. There is no antidote for this weird poison recorded in the wordless medical scripture, and you can only use your own cultivation to resist it. Chun Beiyuan, who owns the wordless medical classic, naturally knows everything about it. But can this kind of thing really stump our young master Beiyuan? Kneel down. Deep in his soul, the sleeping little silly dragon, Anu, suddenly noticed something was wrong, feeling inexplicably uneasy, as if his most beloved thing was being stolen. Under the influence of this uneasy feeling, she actually wanted to break out of her slumber and wake up. At this moment, a familiar spiritual force appeared and began to comfort the restless little silly dragon. Anu, be good. Sleep well. Eh? You on? So, good. The restless little silly dragon was gradually calmed down and gave a charming response. The slight gap in the opening was closed again, and its tail danced happily a few times. Well, this is what makes a good boy hiss. An unknown gasps suddenly appeared. Fortunately, a certain little silly dragon didn't notice anything strange, and just kept mumbling a yuan to himself, and then quickly fell asleep. A yuan, and Bu stood outside Long's house with her head lowered, her face covered by a black cloak. Her hands were clenched and turned white, and her nails dug deeply into her flesh, but she didn't know it. She began to regret it a little. Maybe she didn't ask the Lord. Bei Yuan to come see her daughter. Otherwise, such evil consequences would not have occurred, and my daughter would not have suffered such humiliation. She couldn't bear this kind of humiliation alone. So why bother involving her family? She is not a qualified mother. At this moment, she subconsciously ignored Long Ruabing's shy and expectant expression just now. What's more, she ignored that she also had a tool husband who became a vegetable and would never wake up in this life. As time went by, she felt more and more tortured and distressed. Maybe, she should have gone in and sat down just now. Just when she was feeling mentally exhausted, she suddenly noticed a subtle aura approaching. Immediately, he saw a gentle figure holding a snow-white fox approaching the Long family. Obviously, someone finally couldn't bear it anymore. And Biu was stunned and wanted to stop her, but when she thought of the special status of the other party as Chen Beun's fiancé, she stopped immediately. Even the other strong men of the Qin family who were secretly protecting them turned a blind eye to the approach of the intruder and allowed him to enter the Long family openly. Soon, Bai Ruawei searched for the sound and came outside a room and found a gap in the door. She subconsciously looked through the gap, then froze in place and loosened her hands. Snapped. The female fox in her hand fell upside down. Chapter 90, Part 1 An hour later, everything returned to silence and there was no more noise. Go back to Donghua University to continue your studies. From today on, no one will dare to disturb you. You are still the cool school beauty in everyone's eyes, just like before. Chen Beiyuan glanced at the gap outside the door, stood up immediately, tightened his clothes, and didn't even look at Long Ruabing who had a discomfort in his throat on the ground. He was very stiff. After saying that, he walked towards the door without looking at Long Ruabing on the ground. Suddenly, his steps paused slightly, he accidentally stepped on something, and his trousers were splashed with water. How bearable! Click! The door was closed. Lung Ruabing, who was lowering his head and coughing crazily, suddenly trembled. Listening to the distant footsteps, a trace of bitterness and joy gradually appeared on his painful face, and tears kept dripping from the corners of his eyes and hit the ground. The nightmare is finally over. During this period of time, the changes that occurred one after another were like a disaster and a nightmare to her. After leaving Chen Beiyuan, 
she was no longer the aloof and cold school beauty before. Instead, she became a joke and a fool who gossiped behind countless people's backs. The decline of the Long family, the coma of his father, the disappearance of his mother, the betrayal of his relatives, the indifference of his friends, the covetousness of outsiders. Fortunately, it's all over. What Chen Beiyuan just said was enough to change her situation drastically. From this moment on, all the cold words will not disappear without a trace. She will once again become the noble Miss Long among countless people. Everything is back to the starting point. Her eyes were a little dazed, as if she had gone back to everything she had with Chan Beiyuan before. Only after experiencing the beating of reality and the warmth and warmth of human relationships, only then did she clearly understand what a lofty status Chen Beiyuan gave him. It's a pity that the man who once deeply loved her has been lost by her own hands. Until now, she didn't know what she had lost. Maybe I still have a chance. Suddenly, she slowly raised her head and looked at the sofa that Chin Beiyuan had just made. She subconsciously crawled over and pressed her face against it. Feeling the remaining warmth and the man's remaining breath, her face gradually revealed a look of obsession and greed. Beiyuan. By family. In a cozy room, the walls are covered with picture frames. The photos inside are all of Chun Beiyuan's appearance since childhood. There is the softness and cuteness of infancy, and there is the ignorance and innocence of childhood. There are also those who are gentle and elegant when they grow up, and those who are cold and domineering. In the photo frame, the most special thing is an eight-year-old little girl holding an ignorant baby boy biting and biting, both sides looking at each other. Some of these photos were taken normally, and some were taken secretly. In addition, there are many items related to Chan Beiyuan in the room. Suddenly, ripples appeared in the void, and Bai Ruawe appeared in her room, throwing the snow-white fox out of her hand. Her cold eyes seemed to be in a trance and her gorgeous face seemed to be burning hot. What on earth did I do? She covered her face, images of the cracks in the room kept appearing in her mind, and her heart was beating wildly. She didn't expect that the little guy back then would grow up so fast, and she almost didn't recognize him. At this moment, she no longer had the cold and holy spirit like a fairy before, but instead had a bit more of the fireworks of the mundane world. Like a fairy who fell into the mortal world. Suddenly, she felt something strange, and suddenly looked at her right hand covering her face. In the cold wind, Lin Zhao's eyes were bloodshot, and he stood there with an ugly face, waiting for a full hour. His eyes were fixed in the direction of the Long family's ancestral home from beginning to end. As time passed, his face gradually became ugly and livid, his breathing became rapid, his cheeks twitched, and the smell of rust and blood gradually filled his clenched teeth. At this moment, he was like a wild beast in a state of rage. Even if he is stupid, he can still guess what happened inside. It's not like he didn't think about rushing in to stop it. But just when he was about to make some moves, he felt an overwhelming sense of crisis coming over him. Obviously, there are many strong men of the Chen family hidden near the seemingly peaceful ancestral home of the Long family. As long as he makes any move, he will be surrounded and killed endlessly in an instant. After weighing the pros and cons, he chose to watch. However, what made him feel even more vomiting was that when a figure that looked like a snow-white fairy entered just now, no one stepped forward to stop it. Okay, okay, others can do it but he can't, right? At this moment, Lin Zhao's jealousy and murderous intention towards Chin Beiyuan had almost reached its peak. Just when he fell into an incompetent rage, the door of the Long family finally opened, and Chen Beiyuan's figure walked out calmly. Although Chin Beiyuan was no different from before when he entered, Lin Xiao was keenly aware of Chin Beiyuan's meaningful smile. Ah, 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 ah. Owner. Seeing Chun Beiyuan come out, and Bi Yu took the initiative to greet him. It seemed like an unintentional move but she took the opportunity to sniff Chin Beiyuan through this approach. Her expression suddenly froze, her body trembled slightly, and then she became calm, as if it had never happened. Regarding her little action, Chin Beiyuan just smiled lightly, as if he didn't see it. From now on, no one dares to bully her. Are you satisfied with this explanation? Thank you, master. And Biyu's stiff and cold face under the cloak squeezed out a smile. Madam, do you want to meet your husband who is turned into a vegetative state? No, that's not important anymore. Seeing in Biyu's rejection, Chun Beiyuan didn't say anything more, as if he had expected it. For this glamorous young woman from the Miaogu tribe, her daughter Long Ruabing is the most important. Otherwise, she would not have handed over the position of Saintess and Emperor Gu to Long Ruabing in the original work. Just when Chen Beiyuan was about to leave within Biyu, he suddenly thought of something and stopped. Owner, you stand here and don't move. I'll go over and take care of things. Chun Beiyuan suddenly spoke. Immediately, he was alone and walked straight in the direction where Lin Xiao was hiding. Chapter 91, Part 1 Not good. Lin Xiao, who was furious and madly forbearing, suddenly saw Chen Beiyuan walking towards him,
but he was suddenly startled and subconsciously wanted to run away. This is not because he was cowardly. It was mainly because Chin Beiyuan had left him too deep an impression and was too powerful. Even though he had successfully completed Dragon Transformation and had obtained many opportunities, his strength had changed dramatically. But he knew that once he started fighting, he still didn't have much confidence in winning. In addition, there were still many strong men from the Dongwachin family around him. Once they started fighting, they would definitely be beaten up by the crowd. By then, he would even be in danger of falling. Therefore, his subconscious reaction at this moment was not to retreat without a fight. It should be a strategic retreat. This is, follow your heart. However, Chun Beiyuan seemed to know his thoughts and suddenly turned into a phantom, suddenly appeared in front of him and directly blocked his way. Damn it, Lin Zhao's eyes shrank. He didn't expect Chen Beiyuan to have such a ghostly and terrifying speed. You know, Chen Beiyuan had mostly shown overwhelming power before. On the contrary, he rarely showed speed. Now it seems that his speed is not inferior to that shocking power. He is not kind. Chen Beiyuan, what do you want to do? Do you want to humiliate me? Lin Zhao's bloodshot eyes stared at the noble and mysterious figure in front of him. His breathing suddenly became rapid, and he asked with gritted teeth. First he played with his beloved goddess, and then deliberately blocked him. Isn't it obvious that he is here to show off his power? This scene is just like some urban novels, where the powerful second generation snatched the goddess of the poor boy, and always liked to humiliate the poor boy after playing with him for a while, so as to get psychological satisfaction. It's really too much. At this moment, he could clearly sense that in an instant, many terrifying auras appeared around him and locked on him faintly. As long as he made the slightest move, he would be met with endless terrifying murderous intent. At this moment, Lin Xiao clenched his fist tightly, and was ready to be humiliated. As long as he could survive, he would be humiliated. He was used to it anyway. If he really started fighting, he was not sure. It would be ridiculous if the net was not broken. It was the best choice to endure for the time being. He watched Chin Beiyuan raise his hand, subconsciously clenched his teeth, closed his eyes, and prepared to get close to him to get slapped. It was not that he liked to abuse himself, but he was slapped too many times by Chin Beiyuan, and he was used to being slapped, and he had a subconscious reaction. But to his surprise, the severe pain on his face did not come, but he was gently patted on the shoulder. Lin Xiao, I haven't seen you for a few days. You are getting more and more perverted. What do you mean by closing your eyes and stretching your face over? Do you want to take the initiative to stretch it over for me to hit? Chen Beiyuan's slightly playful voice appeared in his ears. Lin Xiao was stunned, opened his eyes, and seemed a little stunned. Obviously, he was a little surprised by Chen Beiyuan's attitude and actions at this moment. It seems that this is different from what he imagined. Is there a conspiracy? Do you think I am here to humiliate you? You think too highly of yourself. To be honest, as long as you don't block my way, I won't even look at you. You and I are not from the same world. Chen Beiyuan looked at Lin Xiao, who was alert in front of him, with deep eyes and a meaningful smile on his lips. Have you ever thought that from the beginning to the end, it was you who took the initiative to provoke me? If it was the incident at Longting Hotel, you and I might just be strangers. As for the beatings you received before, if you are a gangster, you have to admit your mistakes and stand at attention when you are beaten. You will understand this principle. I didn't take your life directly. I was very kind. Lin Xiao opened his mouth and wanted to refute, but he couldn't say a word. Because Chen Beiyuan was telling the truth. If he had not chosen to use Long Ruabing to plot against Chen Beiyuan at the beginning, the following events would not have happened at all. They may just be strangers who meet by chance. For a moment, he was speechless by Chen Beiyuan. Seeing that the protagonist Lin Xiao, the miracle doctor, was speechless by him. Chun Beiyuan's grin became more intense, his eyes drooped slightly, as if to hide some playful emotions, and whispered like a devil. You saw it just now, what does it feel like to see the woman you like in the arms of another man? Do you know why? Just because you have no power, you think that by climbing into the Lin family, you have a background and a backer. But in the eyes of outsiders, you are just a dog of the Lin family. Lin Xufeng really treats you as his adopted son? Lin Jiozhou and Lin Jiuxiao really treat you as brothers? The Lin family really treats you as one of their own? Do you really have no idea? In this world, profit is the most important thing. Believe it or not, as long as I provide enough profit, the Lin family will twist off your head without hesitation and give it to me as a gift. Your so-called backer is worthless in my eyes. Lin Zhao's body trembled, his pupils shrank, and he suddenly felt a chill rising from the soles of his feet to Tianling Gai. He really wanted to say that Chen Beiyuan was alarmist and sowing discord, but others didn't know it. He didn't know the Lin family's attitude towards him. Lin Zhuzhou used him as a dog training, Lin Zhuxiao coveted his goddess, and also coveted his body. Lin Xiao suppressed the trembling of his body and asked in a hoarse voice, What exactly do you want to say? In this world, relying on mountains and mountains, relying on everyone to run, 
Only relying on one's own strength is the king. What others promise you is empty until you get it, and you can go back on it. You have to take the initiative to fight for it, take the initiative to rob it, and take the initiative to risk your life. This is a world where people cannibalize people. If you don't cannibalize people, just waiting for people to eat? You are not even qualified to be my opponent now. Chen Beiyuan looked directly into his eyes, and his expression became serious. Boom! Lin Xiao was struck by lightning and looked at Chen Beiyuan in front of him in disbelief. He never dreamed that Chen Beiyuan, his opponent, would show him a trace of kindness and respect. He even used these words to guide him. For a moment, he was a little confused. People are always mean-spirited. Before, he wanted to eat Chen Beiyuan's flesh, gnaw on his bones, and drink his blood. But now, after the other party suddenly showed a trace of kindness and a trace of respect, he was actually a little flattered and even began to secretly rejoice. Even the previous hatred disappeared. This is indeed a bit of a Stockholm Syndrome trend. It's good if you understand. Chen Beiyuan saw the other person's taut expression, nodded with satisfaction, patted his shoulder again, quietly left a trace of evil thoughts behind, and was about to turn around and leave. The protagonist, the miracle doctor, has obviously been hit too frequently during this period, and has lost much confidence. Just know that being patient is not a good thing. He, the destined villain, naturally needs a mental SBU. Lin Xiao stared blankly at Chen Beiyuan's retreating figure. His face no longer had the ferocious expression just now, but instead felt more moved. He never expected that the person who understood him best would be Chen Beiyuan, whom he had always regarded as his opponent and wanted to kill. The other party actually gave him enough respect when he was at his lowest. For a moment, Lin Xiao felt a little inexplicably moved by Chen Beiyuan. Suddenly, Chen Beiyuan, who was walking away, stopped suddenly, turned around, and walked back towards him. Um, is there anything else? Lin Xiao looked at Chen Beiyuan walking towards him, a little stunned. I almost forgot something. Snapped. Chen Beiyuan raised his hand, slapped Lin Xiao hard, and instantly slapped him to the ground. Even his teeth came out. Lin Xiao? When he reacts, Chen Beiyuan had already hugged and Biyu in the black cloak and walked towards the distance, waving his hand without looking back. This slap will be used as tuition. Chapter 92, Part 1. That's too much. Lin Xiao covered the swollen left side of his face, looked at the two figures walking away, and then looked at the broken teeth on the ground, and suddenly he was shaking with anger. What a bully. He was moved for less than a few seconds when that bastard came up and slapped him. So damn hard. He didn't react for a moment. Even his teeth were knocked out. Lin Xiao, who was covering his face, was furious, picked up the broken teeth on the ground, spit blood on the ground, and yelled viciously at Chin Beiyuan who was walking away. Chin Beiyuan, the shame I feel today will be repaid twice as much in the future. At this moment, it was as if he had regained his fighting spirit by that slap. He was no longer as lifeless as before, but instead he became much stronger. The retreating figure just waved his hand, as if to say he understood. Lin Xiao snorted coldly, covered his face with one hand and his butt with the other, and limped back towards the Lin family. At this moment, he couldn't wait to start doing things. Sure enough, the protagonist is like a donkey. Talking to him is of no use. If he comes up and slaps him a few times, he will be energetic in minutes. That's fine. You act like a coward all day long. You are submissive. If you don't take the initiative to find opportunities and do things, you are not the protagonist. If you don't take the initiative to grow, where will I go to cut leaks? Chun Beiyuan's eyes were slightly lowered, the corners of his mouth were slightly raised, an unpredictable smile appeared on his face, and he subconsciously tightened his arms around and Biyu. Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, may have been suppressed too much by him before, which made him lose his self-confidence. He was so used to being patient that he turned into AF asterisk asterisk king teenage mutant ninja turtle. During this period of time, he has been hiding in the Lin family, or following Lin Jiuxiao, and there is a vague tendency to be the Lin family's dog. This is not possible. This is not in his interest. Next, some of his plans will still need Lin Zhao's tool, son of fortune. If Lin Xiao is ruined like this, what's the point? At this moment, Chen Beiyuan, who was deep in thought, did not notice that the breathing of a certain cold figure in his arms began to become rapid. Owner. Lung family. Beiyuan. Lung Ruabing leaned against the window, looking at Chen Beiyuan's retreating figure infatuatedly, with a blush on his face and drool slowly dripping from the corner of his mouth. By family. What did I do again? Bai Ruawei was lying on the wet pink quilt, covering her face with her left hand, her stunning face a little absent-minded. Those cold eyes were covered with a thin layer of mist, looking straight at the dense photo frames hanging on the wall, murmuring to himself, Bai Yuan, by family ancestral hall, by Yuza, who was covered like a mummy and was ordered to kneel in front of his ancestors to reflect on himself, had a look of grief and indignation. Brother-in-law, help me. Imperial Frontlines, 
prison camps. A group of special prisoners who were rushed in, including old people, men, and women, were directly assigned to the death squad to be responsible for the subsequent frontline investigation work. Among them, a certain fat man who was huge and weighed more than 300 kilograms made the person in charge of the prison camp overjoyed and exclaimed that the quality of the prisoners this time was good. This plump, chubby prisoner is best used as bait. Those ferocious beasts and aliens like to catch this kind of prey to boil oil. If the trap is well made, it will be no problem to take down a foreign team in minutes. Sir, I was wronged, wronged. Let me go back, I don't dare anymore. My lord, my lord, my niece Longruabing is now young Master Chin's woman. Please let me go. Sir, I was really wronged. Please tell Mr. Chan that I am the second young master of the Chin family. Give me some face, give me some face. Shut up, everyone. Few of the people who come to this hellish place are unjustly accused. I'm warning you. This is the front line of the empire, not a place to cry out grievances. If you have grievances, cry out to the ferocious beasts and aliens. All the old people over there are coming over to explain the rules of the prison camp to the newcomers. The person in charge of the prison camp didn't show any mercy and shouted directly. Soon, the old men in the prison camp, who had a vicious look and could tell at a glance that they were not good-natured people, surrounded them with ill intentions. Just when the Long family and young Master Chu were being pushed to the ground by the old men in the prison camp and telling the rules in a corner, an old figure who had lost his arms was lying on the ground like an old dog, chewing on a nest stained with sand. Hotel box. A group of young men were hugging women, drinking and bragging, having fun and feasting, just when the atmosphere was about to reach a climax. A tall and burly figure suddenly opened the door to the box, strode up to a young man with arms around him and an arrogant look on his face, and lowered himself to report. Second young master, something happened to Chu Suiyuan. The face of second young master Qin, who was smiling happily, suddenly changed. Snapped. A bottle of foreign wine hit the ground directly. The huge sound instantly silenced the atmosphere in the box. All eyes were focused on the arrogant second young master Qin. Obviously, the second youngster of the Qin family, who comes from a top family, is the core of the scene. The Donghua Qin family is not only a top aristocratic family, but also a marriage alliance between the Donghua Lin family and an in-law family. His eldest sister Qin Huayue is the head wife of the young master of the Lin family. With this kind of relationship, the second young master of the Qin family is used to being arrogant and domineering. I saw him push away the woman in his arms, his handsome face trembling slightly, becoming ferocious, looking coldly at the subordinate who came in to report, asshole, who did this? Who in the entire Yinjing city doesn't know that Chu Suiyuan's dead fat pig was the dog I kept outside? Who would eat the heart of a bear or the courage of a leopard? It's Chun Beiyuan. Swish. The atmosphere at the scene instantly became cold and silent. Second young master Qin's ferocious expression also stiffened instantly, and he swallowed a certain word in his mouth. Everyone present looked as if they had seen a ghost. As soon as Qin Ursheo's words came out just now, everyone present was afraid that they would suffer. The Qin family is not someone to be trifled with. Before, even Lin Jiuzhou suffered a big loss at the hands of Qin Beiyuan. Ahem, let me reiterate here. The man named Chu Suiyuan has nothing to do with me. Come on, keep drinking, keep playing music, keep dancing. Please give me five-star reviews and free gifts. Chapter 93, Part 1 After meeting her daughter Long Ruabing and getting her master's promise, and Biyu finally calmed down and began to prepare to go to Miao territory to implement the revenge plan. This time, she is no longer fighting alone like in the original work. With the support of Qin Beiyuan, she will definitely go much smoother. He wouldn't end up dying like in the original work. The next day, under the arrangement of Qin Beiyuan, and Biyu left Yinjing through special channels. Leaving with her were several strong women from the Donghua Qin family. Because of the special characteristics of the Miaogu tribe, strong men are too eye-catching. On the contrary, strong women can quickly integrate into it. She raised her eyes and looked at the ancient and oppressive imperial capital, and could vaguely see a vague figure looking at her silently and waving goodbye. Owner. Lin Xiao, who returned to Donghua Lin's house, somehow borrowed a starting capital of one billion from Lin Jiu Xiao using some means. A pharmaceutical company named Azure quietly appeared in Shanghai. Obviously, after a period of mental stress from Qin Beiyuan, Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, finally regained his confidence and deeply realized how important it is to have a force of his own. Other people's things belong to other people and have nothing to do with him. On the contrary, no matter how shabby the grass team that I started to build is, it is still my own industry. He has a wordless medical classic. So long as he comes up with a few prescriptions with special effects and makes them into the company's products, his grass team can quickly grow and develop into a behemoth. To be honest, at first he thought about placing Azure in Yinjing, the imperial capital, but in the end he gave up. Yinjing is a place with too many hidden dragons and crouching tigers, and there are too many bosses. 
If some big shots take notice, the Azure company that he has invested so much effort in may change hands and become someone else's property in a matter of seconds. Moreover, what made him even more afraid was a certain bastard named Chan Beiyuan. In the end, after careful consideration, Lin Xiao decided to place Azure in Magic City. The Magic City is one of the most important international cities in the empire. Its economic strength ranks among the top cities in the world. It is one of the windows of the empire to the outside world. Although the Magic City is also a hidden dragon and crouching tiger, with many big names, compared to Yinjing, there are still many fewer. More importantly, the Donghua Lin family has considerable influence in the Magic City. Lin Jiuxiao said that her second sister was in charge of the Lin family's property in the Magic City, and if anything happened, Lin Xiao could go to her for help. This is definitely great news. At the beginning, this little-known blue company did not attract the attention of others in Shanghai. Just when it launched a whitening cream that can whiten people's whole body and has excellent effects, and a beauty cream that can smooth facial wrinkles, a golden gun with aphrodisiac effects. Poor pill, golden kidney liquid with kidney tonifying effects, and other special products became popular instantly. For a moment, the entire demonic city was alarmed, and countless coveted eyes were cast on him. According to the calculations of many thoughtful people, this blue company has the terrifying potential to grow into a trillion group. This is simply a golden mountain. With such huge benefits, even those wealthy families would be tempted. However, after learning that the company named Azure had the background of the Donghua Lin family, many people gave up their thoughts. Chen Beiyuan, sooner or later, you will regret what you said to me before. When the time comes, I will thank you properly. Lin Xiao looked at the increasing number of assets in his account, and his eyes became hot. With so much money, he can do many things in the future, and he can also form his own armed force. After fighting alone for so long, he has fully realized the terror of the human sea tactic. No matter how strong you are, you still need everyone's strength before you become a truly strong person. At this moment, he wanted to give himself a big mouth. Why didn't he think of this good idea before? Sure enough, this is the correct way to open the protagonist of the Miracle Doctor. What was he doing before? However, Lin Xiao never imagined that his seemingly secretive actions could not be hidden from Chan Beiyuan's eyes. Mr. Chun, Weilan's development potential is huge. It's no less generous than some arms businesses, and it's even more violent. After all, the raw materials for those drugs are extremely low-priced. A few dollars can generate at least tens of thousands of profits. At present, Weilan has initially started to make profits and has received many orders from home and abroad. Many international brands want to cooperate with Weilan. So far, Weilan's profit has exceeded 3 billion, and it is still growing explosively. A mature woman in a black, slim-fitting suit and short skirt stood respectfully in front of Chen Beiyuan, reporting on her work bit by bit. If Lin Xiao were here, he would be shocked to find that the mature woman in front of him is the female president of Weilan Company that he carefully selected. You know, he spent a lot of effort in poaching this female CEO. But why would the female president of his company appear in front of Chin Beiyuan? As if Chin Beiyuan is her boss? He is worthy of being the protagonist of a miracle doctor. With just a few hints, he knew that he wanted to develop his own power. Sure enough, people always have to push. If you don't push, you don't know how much potential you have. In less than a month, I have earned so much money. I am worthy of being a son of fortune. Next time you meet him, you might consider hitting him a little gentler. Chen Beiyuan crossed his legs and listened to the female president's detailed report with a smile on his face. Lin Xiao probably never dreamed that most of the management of the blue company he established, from top to bottom, were his people. Even the armed force, secretly formed and recruited by Lin Xiao were actually members of the Chen family. Even the weapons and equipment he secretly purchased were purchased from the Chen family's Longtin Group's underground channels at a 30% premium. Chapter 94, Part 1 On the surface, the controller of Weilan Company is Lin Xiao. But in fact, the entire Weilan company from top to bottom is Chan Beiyuan's people. Even the armed forces, secretly formed and recruited, were completely infiltrated by Chan Beiyuan's people. Lin Xiao, the founder, was not only effectively sidelined, but even the whereabouts of all the money was under Chan Beiyuan's control. Moreover, he had to support Chan Beiyuan's people at his own expense, buy high priced weapons and equipment from the Chen family, and spend a lot of money. It can be said that Chen Beiyuan is the real boss behind Weilan. Lin Xiao is just a hard working worker. I'm afraid even Lin Xiao doesn't know that the Azure he has high hopes for already has the shape of a certain Huang Mao. This is the proper suffering master. Moreover, if something goes wrong, Lin Xiao, the founder, has to take the blame. To put it bluntly, if Chen Beiyuan really wanted to, he could use commercial means at any time to put Lin Xiao into a situation where myriad tribulations would no longer be possible. At that time, he is afraid that he will have to bear a lot of debt for no reason. Isn't it good to practice medicine well? If you have to do cross-border business, how can this world be so beautiful? 
In less than a month, various professional talents were recruited, and the company quickly got on the right track. Some people even took the initiative to invest. How can such a good thing happen? People's loyalty cannot be defeated with money. You are too confident. Lin Xiao, you are really innocent and cute. Chun Beiyuan couldn't help laughing. He knew very well that the reason for this situation was ultimately due to issues of knowledge and structure. Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, came from a lower class background and had no systematic study. The only skill he had was probably his own medical skills. As for finance? Manage? Finance? Sorry, he really doesn't know anything. Under such circumstances, it is understandable that he made some ridiculous actions. Although Chin Beiyuan couldn't help laughing, he would not deliberately laugh at him. No matter how smart a person is, he will show his clumsy side when entering a field that he has never touched before. No one is born to be a jack of all trades or know everything. A person from a lower class background who came out of a mountain village can reach this stage, which is no longer comparable to ordinary people. In a sense, Lin Zhao's current route is correct. He stayed in Yinjing and made connections with wealthy families as a miracle doctor to increase his influence. The Azure Company, he established by himself, has continuously created wealth for him in the Magic City, secretly formed an armed force, and gradually radiated to the outside world. Even if there are any problems along the way, they can be solved by relying on their own strength. To be honest, if Chin Beiyuan hadn't intervened, he might have succeeded. It's a pity that there are not so many ifs in this world. Some are just bloody and cruel realities. You go back first and keep an eye on the direction of our boss Lin's funds. If there is less than 100 million, you don't need to report to me. If you want the horse to run, you have to feed it some grass. Let him experience what it's like to be a billionaire. Yes, Mr. Chan. The female CEO of Azure stepped back respectfully. This businesswoman with an arrogant personality, who had to be reluctantly agreed by Lin Xiao after being invited by Lin Xiao personally, seemed extremely obedient in front of Chun Beiyuan, even flattering and trying to please. There is no way. This is the huge difference brought about by status and rights. For a so-called female CEO, Chun Beiyuan did not pay too much attention, but picked up other intelligence materials sent to her. The division of interest on the border front has not yet ended. The top forces are suspected of conflict, and there have been fluctuations in the battle between eight great war emperors. Chun Beiyuan frowned slightly, but immediately relaxed, but there was no big surprise. The Chen family has already obtained half of the border territory acquired by the old man, so naturally they will not continue to participate. The remaining half will have to be divided among the imperial royal family and the top aristocratic families. As the royal family, the Jiang family must account for the majority, so there will be even less fat left. How could the ancestors of many other top families agree? From the initial negotiation to the present, the superior eight grade war emperors have almost turned red in the face. They have become a little impatient, and have even begun to have a tendency to start a fight and decide the territory by force. Don't think that those high-ranking and powerful people must be chatting, laughing, amiable, and personable. When it comes to interests, there are never a few people who get red in the face, roll up their sleeves, and want to fight. The mineral resources, population resources, and undeveloped secret realm resources contained in the newly incorporated territory of the empire are enough to cultivate how many strong men. How many years will it be enough to keep the family strong? In this case, the so-called strong man's demeanor is not necessary. It's just that everyone can still maintain restraint. According to the blood oath contract signed between the Donghua Empire and the ferocious beast tribe hundreds of years ago, the territory each conquered must be held for two years before it can be owned by the other side. This time, the old man made such a big noise, those guys will never give up. In the next two years, they will definitely retaliate crazily and want to take back the occupied territory. This is why the ancestors of each family appear. The fundamental reason on the border front. Who would let go of the meat in your mouth easily? Regardless of the fierce quarrel among the ancestors of each family now, once the ferocious alien beast dares to come, these people will unanimously protect their own interests in a matter of minutes. However, the strange thing is that until now, those ferocious beasts and aliens have been silent. This is not in line with their character. Chen Beiyuan put down the information in his hand, rubbed his brows, and showed a little fatigue on his face. For some reason, he always had a bad feeling. Mr. Chun, is there any movement over there? Young master, no? Mr. Chin, who was hiding in the shadows, was a little surprised, but he still replied in a hoarse voice. Chun Beiyuan frowned, nodded silently, and asked no more questions. This matter is obviously not something that he, a fifth grade war master, can get involved in. He just needs to know. The sky is falling, but there are still tall people holding it up. The most capable old monsters in the Donghua Empire are all gathered on the border front at this moment. If those ferocious aliens dare to make any move, they will be attacked head on in minutes. In the original work, Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, colluded with the ferocious beast alien race. But now, 
This son of fortune is being stared at so hard that it is difficult for him to do anything. My main task now is to increase my mental strength, integrate my fighting spirit and body at a high density, and break through to the sixth grade war king. With my current cultivation speed, assisted by the Zhuang Dao Sutra, within two months at most, my mental strength will be able to reach another level. By then, I can try to break through to the sixth grade battle king. However, there is still a faster way to speed up. It seems that we still have to go to Donghua Academy. Donghua Academy, as the number one sacred land for students in the empire, has an eighth grade magic weapon that can be used to assist in training. Donghua students can apply to use it as long as they have enough credits and contributions. This thing has a lot of effect on me. Chapter 95, Part 1 Donghua Academy Hey, is that Lung School Beauty? Why do I feel like she's become beautiful again? However, I am more confident and more stunning than before. OMG, what a beautiful Donghua woman. She is definitely the most beautiful lady I have ever seen in the Donghua Empire. That aloof and queen-like temperament is even better than that of the princess of Sakura Kingdom. The women of the Donghua Empire are indeed the top beauties in the world. A cold and charming figure, like a lonely rose, with a cold temperament walked on the road of the college. Her long black hair, stunning face, and cold eyes as dazzling as sapphires exuded a strange charm, attracting the attention of countless people. Even some exchange students with different skin colors and from top colleges in various countries were attracted by this cold and charming figure at this moment, and they exclaimed one after another. As the world's top college, Donghua University naturally has regular international college exchanges. Due to the power of the Donghua Empire, exchange students from various countries come to the Donghua Empire every year to learn some of the ideas of the Donghua Empire and conduct exchanges in academic cultivation. These exchange students from various countries arrived at Donghua University three days ago. In response to the exclamations and shocks around him, Long Ruabing remained calm and composed. Her face no longer had the previous taciturnity, inferiority, and despair. The whole person seemed to be reborn, glowing with dazzling light, full of confidence and arrogance. It has to be said that power is the best beauty agent, which is enough to transform people and make them radiant. Wherever her eyes fell, there were smiling faces, mixed with flattery and flattery. What used to be sarcasm and harsh words have now turned into flattery and smiles. This world is real. Everything changed when Shin Beiyuan announced that she would regain the same treatment as before. The major families that had previously attacked the Long family came to the door overnight to please bear their thorns, double the amount of the Long family's property, and hand over relevant personnel. Her father's friends who had shunned her, and her acquaintances who were sarcastic and sarcastic all came to apologize and beg for forgiveness. Everything changes so fast. It was so fast that Long Ruabing was dazzled and unable to react. It took her several days to get used to the change again. Long Ruabing knew very well that the reason for such a terrifying change was just because of Chun Beiyuan's words. His words were enough to make those who had bullied her feel overwhelming despair and fear, enough to kill them. If you want to live, you have to kneel down and beg her for forgiveness. This is the power of power. Long Ruabing murmured to himself. Chun Beiyuan's domineering and cold figure suddenly appeared in her mind his generous and warm palms, the feeling of suffocation, and his body trembled suddenly. A blush appeared on her cheeks, and her cold and charming face suddenly became a bit more charming and charming. This scene has mesmerized many people and captivated their souls. Even among the crowd, Lin Xiao, who was very low-key, was stunned by this scene. He never expected that Long Ruabing would change so much, as if he had been nourished and became more beautiful and beautiful like a blooming rose. Ruabing. Lin Xiao only felt that his heart was moved again. But at this moment, a tall, foreign exchange student, with a matte black body, thick hair, and a strong body odor came with a few followers, and in full view of everyone, he looked confidently toward Long Ruabing walked over and directly blocked her way. Beautiful lady, I am Talos, the prince of the kingdom of Clover. You are the most beautiful Donghua woman I have ever seen. Can you be my girlfriend? The hairy and matte black prince Talos licked his fertile black lips and looked at the Donghua woman in front of him with confidence, his eyes full of greed. This is definitely the most beautiful Donghua woman he has seen in the past few days. It was so beautiful that he was attracted by it at the first sight. Talos was very confident, confident that the woman in front of him would not reject his confession. When he was an exchange student at top colleges in other countries, as long as he revealed his identity as the Prince of the Kingdom of Clover, the women would be moved by it and actively agree to his confession. The Prince of a country and the future king at the same time. With the blessing of such a terrifying identity, who can endure it? Over the years, he has had more than three-digit girlfriends in various countries. Now, his girlfriends are waiting for him to inherit the throne and become the king and marry them as queens. But how could the smart Prince Talos be so stupid as to marry those stupid women? 
He is so smart that he will never stop looking for a new girlfriend. Prince Talos' face was full of confidence. He raised his head arrogantly, enjoying the strange looks around him, as if the woman in front of him had already agreed. Unfortunately, at this moment, he did not see the undisguised disgust and cold eyes on Long Ruabing's face. Dumbass. Prince Talos' dark and confident face froze suddenly, and he froze on the spot. He was actually scolded by a woman? He is the noble prince of Talos. By the time he reacted and fell into rage, the Long Ruabing in front of him had long disappeared. The unabashed cynicism from the surrounding people also reached his ears. Ha ha ha, that stupid big guy. If he has no brain, he has no brain. Ha ha ha, silly stuff. You dare to mess with Mr. Chin's women? I think he is impatient. I think his brain is not fully evolved. He wants to have sex with a woman when he sees her. TSK, TSK, TSK. He doesn't have the eyes to see it. If Chin Beiyuan knew about it, he wouldn't be able to reap the benefits. The sarcastic voices appeared one after another in Prince Talos' ears, which immediately aroused his furious flames even more vigorously, like an angry chimpanzee. He was so angry that he had nowhere to express his anger, so he slapped several of his followers, one by one, and scolded fiercely. A bunch of trash. Why didn't you stop that woman just now? The furious Talos did not realize the seriousness of the matter at this moment, nor did he notice that some people looked at him as if they were looking at a dead person, still in a state of anger. Angry, he looked around and began to look for traces of Long Ruabing. But at this moment, a cry of surprise suddenly sounded next to him. Master Chun? Swish. Prince Talos immediately moved toward the exclamation point. I happened to see a noble and elegant figure walking into Donghua Academy. Chun Beiyuan, who had just arrived at Donghua University, put his pockets in his pockets and was about to walk straight to the principal's office. But several dark figures suddenly appeared in front of them, blocking the way. Um, where did the chimpanzee come from? When did Donghua University become a zoo? Are you Chin Beiyuan? Chapter 96, Part 1. Are you Chin Beiyuan? The leader of the chimpanzee, Prince Talos looked at Chin Beiyuan, who was so fragile and tender in front of him, with a ferocious look on his face, his eyes full of contempt. He raised his arms and bent them, revealing thick and strong black muscles, as if to show off his strength. Several followers around him also surrounded Chin Beiyuan in a tacit understanding, trying to put pressure on him. Obviously, this is not the first time they have done this. When their princes were pursuing women from all over the world, some of them had boyfriends. At this time, they had to rely on coercion and inducement. And this scene instantly attracted the attention of everyone in Donghua Academy. Those foreign exchange students also showed joking expressions, as if they were watching a show. Prince Talos looked at Chin Beiyuan, who was silent in front of him, as if he was frightened, with a sneer on his face. How come you, a pretty girl with tender skin and tender flesh, have such a beautiful woman? In our country, only the strongest warriors are worthy of the most beautiful women. I, the prince of the kingdom of Clover, the future king. As long as you take the initiative to send your woman, you will get a king's friend. Chen Beiyuan raised his eyes and glanced at him. Bang. Talos' big matte black face exploded instantly, revealing the white bones, and two eyeballs were dragged out, connected to several nerves. The bursting flesh and blood avoided Chen Beiyuan and instantly sprayed onto several Talos people surrounding him. Among them, a Cloverfield man has two thick black lips on his face. Obviously, this thing belongs to their Prince Talos. Snapped. Prince Talos who raised his dark arms and made bodybuilding movements, fell straight down and began to twitch all over, like a skinned gorilla. The severe pain that penetrated into the brain nerves instantly made him collapse and wanted to scream. But the flesh on his face, thick lips, and the black tongue had already exploded and turned into countless fragments. In an instant, the scene fell into deathly silence. Not only the Donghua students, but also the foreign exchange students had expressions of shock and shock. No one expected that Chin Beiyuan would actually take action at Donghua Academy and that Prince Talos would end up in such a miserable state. Gulu, seeing the scene in Talos that was worse than life and death, many people were so frightened that they swallowed their saliva. You, how dare you? Prince Talos is the only heir to the kingdom of Clover. You are dead, you are dead. The dark face of a Cloverfield man was pale with fear at this moment. He carefully removed the two thick, black lips on his face, and with trembling hands, he tried to put them on the twitching and trembling Prince Talos on the ground, but it was to no avail. He looked at Chin Beiyuan in front of him with fear and resentment. Prince Talos has become like this. These scoundrels are doomed, and not even their families can escape this disaster. How can a tribe with a land area of less than 500 square kilometers, a population of less than 150,000 people, and a primitive hunting tribe be called a country? Your so-called country is not as big as a random town in the Donghua Empire. Who gave you the courage to run wild here? The corner of Chun Beiyuan's mouth curled up, 
and he laughed obviously out of anger. Although he didn't know what just happened, he could roughly guess at looking at Long Ruabing not far away. However, it is just because beauty is a disaster. Born in the Donghuachin family, he was very knowledgeable and instantly found out what the so-called Cloverfield Kingdom was from the knowledge he learned in elementary school. The son of a tribal chief must be said to be the prince of the country. It is really a shame to put gold on his face. To put it mildly, when he was five years old, the ranch the old man gave him at the border was F asterisk asterisk king bigger than the kingdom of Cloverfield. With such a thing, you still dare to run in front of him and cause trouble? Who gave him the courage? The Donghua students who were watching also had a look of astonishment on their faces. They thought that Talos was the prince of a small country in the Black Continent. And that was it? A country of less than 500 square kilometers? This was really a joke from hell. However, compared to the Donghua students who were all astonished, the other exchange students from various countries looked a little ugly. Chun Beiyuan's reckless killing obviously made them a little uneasy. With such a big commotion and so many people around, Donghua Academy would naturally not remain indifferent. The senior management of the academy, led by Vice President Liu, soon appeared. Vice Principal Liu, this is the attitude of your Donghua Empire. Our Clover Kingdom is an internationally recognized country. Our prince has been treated like this here. You must give us an explanation. Why don't you catch this murderer? Could it be that you still want to protect the murderer in front of so many people? Seeing the high-level officials of Donghua Academy coming, the Clover people who were just scared pale instantly regained some confidence and began to shout wildly. Even the other few dark-skinned Clover people regained their courage and began to clamor for severe punishment of the murderer. However, to their surprise, the leading vice principal Liu did not catch the murderer as he wished, but looked at Chin Beiyuan with a wry smile. Beiyuan, at least pay attention to the impact. Even if you get the person out, it would be better to clean up. You have to make people look so disgusting in the academy, which is easy to give others a handle. Donghua Academy is a bit passive. Liu Wenwei was also somewhat helpless. Maybe he liked to smooth things over before, but that was for the internal affairs. When it comes to external affairs, he protects his own people first. Let alone anything else, this matter was originally caused by Talos, and Chin Beiyuan just reacted a little too radically. Moreover, he would not arrest Chin Beiyuan unless he was crazy. Seeing Vice President Liu's attitude, the faces of the few Cloverfield people who had just been shouting changed instantly. Damn it. You Donghua Academy actually want to cover up this cruel murderer. The exchange students from various countries present also looked a little ugly. Chen Beiyuan obviously saw Vice President Liu's attitude of wanting to suppress the matter, and the corners of his mouth curled up a little, and he said calmly, Don't worry, I know the rules, I will solve this matter. After that, he ignored the surprised eyes of others, took out his mobile phone, found a number in the contacts at the bottom, and called it directly. The Longting Group, established by his mother, is one of the top 10 arms dealers in the world. It is very powerful and has branches all over the world. Coincidentally, there is an arms branch of Longting Group in the Black Continent. What's more, the biggest warlord in the Black Continent is supported by the Chen family. It can be said that Prince Talos and his lackeys in front of him have hit a wall. At this moment, the person in charge of the Longting Group branch in the Black Continent was called by Chan Beiyuan. Almost immediately after the call was made, in less than three seconds, the other end of the phone was directly connected, and a thick and rough voice appeared. Master Beiyuan, what do you want? Chun Beiyuan spoke lightly, as if he was talking about a trivial matter. In 30 minutes, I want to hear the news that Clover destroyed the country. This book is a cool article, an absolute cool article, with a background that goes all the way, sweeping all the way. If you readers think it is good, please give it a 5-star rating. The author will be very grateful. Chapter 97, Part 1 In 30 minutes, I will hear the news that Cloverfield will destroy the country. As Chin Beiyuan finished speaking, everyone present looked at him as if they had seen a ghost. You just want to destroy the country in 30 minutes with just one sentence. Moreover, it is still a country in the Black Continent. Why do you? Do you know how far away the Donghua Empire is from the Black Continent? Are your hands that long? Are you crazy? At this moment, it's not just some Donghua students who don't believe it. Even the exchange students from various countries had playful expressions on their faces, obviously thinking that Chen Beiyuan was bragging. The faces of those dark-colored Cloverfield men also showed disdainful sneers. Prince Talos, who was twitching crazily on the ground, was also holding on, and his terrifying face with white bones exposed and two huge eyes hanging from a few nerves was trying hard to squeeze out a mocking expression. However, there were some people with expressions of surprise and uncertainty on their faces. They knew the terror of the Donghua Chin family. The Donghua Chin family is by far the most dazzling presence in the Donghua Empire. In fact, in the eyes of many countries, the Chin family has a greater presence than the royal family Jiang. Cloverfield? What is that place? In the land of Black Continent, Chen Xiaolong, the head of the Longting Group branch, had a trace of doubt on his determined face. 
He reacted quickly and immediately remembered a certain nook and corner, which seemed to be the name of a primitive tribe pretending to be a country. Chen Shaolong's expression instantly turned gloomy, and a ferocious look appeared on his face. As a descendant of the Chen family, the young master of the Chen family has been humiliated and must be washed away with blood. Although I don't know how this small place like Cloverfield offended its young master, but based on this, it has a way to kill it. What a stupid bitch. Young master, don't worry. I will make them regret coming to this world. I'm waiting for your good news. On the other end, Chen Beiyuan said in a calm tone and immediately hung up the phone. Snapped. Chen Xiaolong put the satellite phone in his hand on the table with an expressionless expression and then picked up an intercom. His cold voice instantly resounded throughout the Longting branch. All members, start level 1 drill mode, drill target, Kingdom of Cloverfield. The branch's newly developed Stinger missiles and Stinger B missiles are both used in this exercise. Send a message to Clover Kingdom and ask them to send troops to surround the entire Clover Kingdom. Don't let a single Clover man escape. If one escapes, I want their king to look good. I have raised him for so long. It's time for the dog to be unleashed to bite people. Following Chen Shaolong's cold orders, the Longting Group branch, a behemoth stationed in the Black Continent, began to move. In an instant, a series of terrifying fighter planes, drones, and heavily equipped fighter planes, representing the world's top technology, began to activate, carrying destructive weapons and rushing towards the Kingdom of Clover. Along the way, countless small countries were trembling with fear from this terrifying camp, for fear of being wiped out together. At the same time, Clov's Kingdom, this vicious dog supported and raised by the Donghua Chen family, also received orders from its owner and began to open its bloodthirsty fangs and spit out foul smelling saliva. Cloverfield Kingdom, Palace. Dekloff, who was as big as a giant chimpanzee, was just waking up from his sleep. As the king of this country, he naturally lives in the most luxurious palace in the country. At this moment, next to him, there was still a corpse covered in blood and flesh that could not be seen as human. This body is his 1,800th wife and the queen of the kingdom of Clover. Dekloff, who has a cruel personality, likes to kill people most, especially those around him. Most of the wives around him changed every day, and the longest one only lived for three days and these dead bodies will be rewarded by him to the people below to enjoy. The Clover people firmly believe that these corpses containing the essence of their king are the best tonic that can make them stronger. Compared with his father, Prince Talos is obviously a dwarf. It's not on the same level at all. That idiot Talos seems to be going to the Donghua Empire this time. I don't know how many girlfriends he will have to make. That's right. As long as we spread our great blood around the world, the Cloverlanders will stand up sooner or later. At the top of this world, those stupid and short Sakura people want to use weapons and equipment to control the great King Dekloff. They are simply wishful thinking. Not only do I want those weapons and equipment, but I will not give them what they want. Dekloff's matte black face showed a treacherous and greedy expression. After being a local emperor for so many years, he was not willing to hand over what he had in his hands. Just when he was thinking about making that woman his queen, suddenly, a hasty guard figure burst in, shouting with a look of horror. Your Majesty the King, a large number of UFOs suddenly appeared in the sky above the country. What did you say? King Dekloff's expression changed drastically. He subconsciously looked out the window and immediately saw the afterimages of fighter planes speeding past. Suddenly, several round things fell from the sky. Donghua Academy. As time went by, more and more people gathered around. At this moment, about 20 minutes have passed since Chan Beiyuan called. However, no one has found the so-called national destruction message on their mobile phones. At this moment, there are only 10 minutes left before what Chen Beiyuan said. 10 minutes later, a country will be gone? How can this be? For a moment, all eyes were focused on Chen Beiyuan. Long Ruabing looked at Chen Beiyuan's figure with fascination, without the slightest worry, trusting his words very much. Lin Xiao frowned and said nothing. Knowing that Chen Beiyuan was terrifying, he was still confused at this moment. Vice President Liu and other senior officials of the school remained silent and expressionless. The faces of several Clover people were full of ridicule and disdain. Even Prince Talos, who was struggling in pain, looked at Chen Beiyuan in front of him with a ferocious expression. Although his two eyeballs were blown out and only a few nerves were connected, he could still move a little. Clearly, he did not believe his country would perish. The Chen Beiyuan in front of him was just bluffing. But Chen Beiyuan's expression remained unchanged, without any change. At this moment, not far away, a special piece of news was suddenly inserted on the huge screen at the entrance of the Data Institute. Just now, Longting Group, one of the world's top 10 arms groups, suddenly started a weapons drill at a branch in the Black Continent. During the exercise, the Longting branch passed by the Kingdom of Clover and accidentally dropped dozens of the latest developed special missiles. The capital of the Kingdom of Clover suffered a devastating blow. 
According to the latest news, the top brass of Cloverfield Kingdom and the king have been confirmed dead. It is now confirmed that the Kingdom of Clover is destroyed. The Dragon Branch expressed its highest apology for this and promised to properly arrange for the surviving Clover people out of humanitarian considerations. Regardless of men, women, old or young, all were arranged to work in its mines to mine. And it was stated that as long as each person could mine one ton of raw or per day, they would be provided with three meals a day. Chapter 98, Part 1 On the huge screen, the host was reading a press release that was suddenly sent to him. The small window in the upper right corner constantly switches to scenes of ruins in various parts of the Cloverfield Kingdom. At the same time, the dark Clovermen were running around like crazy, burning, killing, and looting. Yes, these dark Cloverfield people, fueled by fear, picked up butcher knives and chopped at their own people, began to plunder property, and tried to escape. There were even people who rushed into the ruins of the palace and ate the dead King Dekloff. In the eyes of many Clover people, their king is a god. If they can eat a bite of divine meat, they can gain powerful power. But when they wanted to run out, they were immediately caught by the army of the Clov's kingdom surrounding them. Each and every black Cloverfielder was friendly, tied up with a rope, and whipped with a whip to drive them away. Soon, Chen Xiaolong, the head of the Longting branch, came forward, shook hands with the king of Clover's kingdom in person, and took away all the homeless Clover people and placed them in a dark mine. Chen Xiaolong, the head of the Longting branch, came forward and said that these clover people will be fully and properly arranged. As long as they can complete the mining tasks, there will be a certain amount of meat in the three meals a day, along with the pictures constantly being projected on the screen. Everyone present instantly fell into deathly silence. The clover men and the half-dead Prince Talos were all frozen in place at this moment, because they saw their family members among the people on the screen who were roped and driven away with whips, especially the half-dead and bloody Prince Talos was trembling crazily. Just now, he saw the charred corpse of his father, King Dekloff, in a fleeting scene. Devil. You are the devil. Prince Talos and several followers no longer had the mocking expressions they had just now. Everyone was trembling with fear and became incontinent on the spot. The stench of rancid urine instantly filled the scene. Normally, other Donghua students and exchange students from various countries around him would have expressed disgust. However, at this moment, they couldn't care about these trivial matters. Because, their attention is now focused on Chan Beiyuan. At this moment, a pair of shocked eyes looked at Chin Beiyuan, as if they were looking at a monster. What he said was actually true. Who would have thought that the Kingdom of Clover would really be destroyed? Who would have thought that the reason for all this is just because of Chan Beiyuan's words? One word can destroy a country. How domineering, how arrogant, and how powerful. Man, this is how it should be. Many Donghua students began to look at Chin Beiyuan with enthusiasm. Exchange students from various countries began to look at Chin Beiyuan with fear. This is a world that worships the strong, and strong power can always bring worship and fear. In this regard, Chen Beiyuan said that this is just a basic operation. In the original work, he was the destined villain who almost destroyed the world. Now, he just destroyed a small country. Vice President Liu, teachers, the kingdom of Cloverfield has been destroyed. These Cloverfield people, no, they should be stateless persons. They should not be counted as exchange students coming to Donghua University from other countries. Facing Chen Beiyuan's smiling inquiry, the top leaders of the school, headed by Liu Wenhui, only responded with a wry smile and nodded. Even they didn't expect that Chin Beiyuan would be so ruthless and directly destroy the Cloverfield Kingdom. The Kingdom of Clover is gone, so Prince Talos is nothing more than bullshit. A stateless person may not be able to enjoy even the most basic human rights in any country around the world. Because there is no one behind you to support you, no one to stand up for you. Anyone can pinch this soft persimmon. Normally, you will be expelled from the country and left to fend for yourself. However, our Donghua Empire is a civilized country, so naturally we will not push you to death. Well, let me find a good place for you to settle down. I see that you guys are tall and strong, and you are a pillar of talent at a glance. The prisoners in the Empire's frontline prison camp have been very angry recently and are lacking a few channels to vent their anger. I think if you go, they should not I will treat you badly. Chin Beiyuan looked at Prince Talos and others who were trembling with fear and had a mental breakdown. It was rare that he softened his heart and did not push them to death. Instead, it gave them a way to survive. As long as they take good care of the prisoners in the camp, they should be able to live a comfortable life. If they are lucky, they should be able to survive for another year and a half. As for the prisoners in the prison camp, will they like these dark Cloverfield men? Haha, ha, they are all locked in there. Even throwing a boar in there will make many prisoners go crazy. What's more, a few living people voluntarily shed the fire. I'm afraid that these Clover people will soon become the number one in the prison camp. I have to say that Chin Beiyuan is still very kind. With his character, he could have killed Prince Talos and others with a thousand cuts. 
But the kind-hearted young Master Chun is still kind and allows them to continue to live. As for how long they can live depends on how the people in the prison camp torture them. However, the kind-hearted young Master Chin obviously did not notice that the people around him looked at them with more fear. Some exchange students even subconsciously covered their buttocks with twitching expressions. No, we don't want to go to that bullshit prison camp. I don't want to stay in this country. Devil, you devil. You must die a happy death. Please, please, let me go, let me go. Obviously, they also know what they will face next. They have always liked to play with people, and they are afraid that they will be played by others next. Therefore, several Clover people began to struggle crazily, but in the end it was just from beginning to end. Soon, several pillars, headed by Talos, were forcibly dragged away. Next, what greeted them was the train heading to the frontline prison camp. However, is it really over? No, of course not. Chen Beiyuan raised his eyes, his eyes wandered among the exchange students from various countries around him, and he slowly said, I hope you understand one thing. This is the Donghua Empire, not a place where you can run wild as you please. I don't care what background you have, whether you are used to being domineering in your own country, or whether you have some other purpose. As long as you dare to cause trouble, those idiots just now will be your fate. Everyone, please be smart. Chapter 99, Part 1 An exchange student from the small country of Hei Buliuchio dared to be so arrogant and dared to provoke him, the young master of the Qin family, in front of everyone. So, Chen Beiyuan could probably guess what was going on among the exchange students from various countries who came this time. Previously, he had roughly heard about the dishonesty of some guys. Relying on their status as exchange students, they have been acting recklessly at Donghua University, saying that they are not used to the life here and can get some special treatment. As the host, Donghua Academy showed a warm hospitality and a very tolerant attitude, and naturally responded to some minor problems. Even Donghua students were very disgusted with some exchange students, but they chose to endure it out of dignity. After all, it is an ancient civilized country. As a result, some people seem to take everything for granted, which inadvertently encourages some people's arrogance. You really take yourself seriously. Others are spoiling them, but Chen Beiyuan is not. If you dare to make trouble in front of him, he will not hesitate whether you are a princess or a prince from a royal family in various countries, or an heir to a wealthy noble family. As for whether the country behind them will be dissatisfied, then let them be dissatisfied. As the young master of the Chen family of Donghua, the future young master of the Qin family, and the leader of the imperial military. His attitude determined the entire Donghua Empire's foreign attitude. This is the Donghua Empire, not your back garden. If you want to mess around and show your temper, the knife in my hand doesn't have an eye, and I can kill you without blinking an eye. Under Chan Beiyuan's gaze, the expressions of some exchange students from various countries suddenly changed, and they subconsciously avoided his gaze, obviously frightened by his strength. You know, most of the Donghua students they have met in the past few days are courteous, elegant and easygoing. This is the first time I have seen such a domineering and cold person. Even some of the tougher ones, who had strong backgrounds and strong backgrounds, wanted to be hard-headed, but under Chen Beiyuan's increasingly cold gaze, they instantly felt a chill all over their body. They only lasted for less than a second, and then lowered their heads. Head. Obviously, they saw Chen Beiyuan's unabashed murderous intention. At this moment, the motherland behind them cannot give them much confidence and security. After all, this is the Donghua Empire. A bunch of bastards. Sure enough, our ancestors were right. Barbarians are afraid of power, but not moral. Trying to influence them simply with virtue is nonsense. Only by cutting them off with a knife will everyone become honest. Chun Beiyuan snorted coldly, glanced at Vice Principal Liu and others next to him, and immediately walked towards the principal's office without looking back. He left everyone with a tall figure that gradually faded away. Young Master Chun is domineering. I've seen these little bastards dislike me for a long time, so I can't stand it. This is the Donghua Empire, and it's my country. Is it possible that I can still be bullied by outsiders in my own home? Mad, I just realized that this is our own territory. When will it be the turn of some outsiders to dominate? That bastard with a bunch of golden hair, are you looking at you? I've been unhappy with you for a long time. Last time we had dinner in the cafeteria, you brought a bunch of people to join my team. Believe it or not, I'll call people over tonight. If asterisk asterisk ked you in the dormitory. Sorry for your mother. Seeing how easily Chin Beiyuan convinced those annoying exchange students, the faces of Donghua students showed expressions of admiration and yearning. This is how domineering a Donghua man should be. For a moment, the way they looked at the exchange students suddenly changed. They were no longer as courteous and polite as before, but as ferocious as wolves. Some of the exchange students who had been domineering before were now stared at by pairs of vicious eyes, and they suddenly felt a little embarrassed. They never imagined that just because of the appearance of Chen Beiyuan, these Donghua students have a tendency to develop from sheep to wolves. This is seriously inconsistent with the Donghua people they know. For a moment, 
These exchange students all looked at the higher-ups of the university present, wanting to get support. However, the senior leaders of the school, headed by Vice President Liu, fell into a deadly silence at this moment. Just now, Chen Beiyuan not only slapped those exchange students in the face, but also slapped them hard. If you let a bunch of outsiders dominate here, are you doing nothing? In the end, Chen Beiyuan, a Donghua student, had to deal with these outsiders himself. Shouldn't this be the dereliction of duty of all the senior teachers of Donghua University? I have been teaching all my life, but I let a student teach me a lesson. Those of us who are teachers, instead of supporting our students, turn a blind eye and blindly ask students to be humble and friendly, then we are really harming our children. I bear the greatest responsibility for this matter. I will go find the principal soon. He must be waiting for me to come over. A wry smile appeared on Liu Wenhui's face, he shook his head, and left directly with the senior leaders of the school behind him, without even looking at the exchange students. These people. It was the turn of some exchange students to be dumbfounded. In an instant, they fled in panic under the ferocious eyes of the surrounding pairs of people. Bei Yuan. Lung Ruabing's eyes were fascinated as he looked at the domineering figure who almost single-handedly subdued the entire audience, and his heart trembled at this moment. This is the man she wants. Lin Xiao stood there silently, clenching his fists, saying nothing, looking at Chen Beiyuan's retreating figure with complicated eyes, not knowing what he was thinking. It was a state of mind that was both envy, admiration, jealousy, and hatred. If only he had been the one standing there just now. Maybe, as long as Chen Beiyuan is a step late, he will get on. He thought a little sourly. After all, I missed a great opportunity and took advantage of him. Principal's office. Zhang Bai threw the document in his hand about special treatment for exchange students from various countries directly into the trash can, with a look of hatred on his face. You're a bunch of trash. What does the empire want to feed you? You have to let a student handle it. Everyone is so used to it that they don't even have any sense of responsibility. They have almost forgotten their identity and responsibilities. Obviously, the principal of Donghua University has always known everything, but he kept silent, thinking that someone would come out to open this pustule that was gradually smelling. Chen Beiyuan walked silently on the road of the college, without saying a word. His eyes were dark, and he had a lot of thoughts. He didn't know what he was thinking. At this moment, his cell phone suddenly rang. The caller turned out to be Chen Xiaolong, the former head of the Black Continent Dragon Division. Chen Beiyuan raised his eyebrows and connected it. Xiaolong, is there anything else? Young master, our people found a large number of standard weapons and ammunition deep in the Palace of Clover Kingdom, including many highly destructive things. I am afraid there is someone behind them. Chapter 100, Part 1 Young Master, the quantity of this batch of arms is not small, and it is extremely well equipped. It is probably enough to support a small war, and is worth no less than billions. The actual value indirectly involved is even more difficult to estimate. If the Kingdom of Clover digests these things, it may be able to wipe out several small countries around it. It seems that the people behind them have great ambitions and want to drive a nail into the land of Black Continent. Chen Xiaolong reported with a slightly hoarse voice. After the Kingdom of Clover fell, all land, minerals, and population naturally belonged to the Dragon Division. When the people of the Longting Branch were searching for loot, they accidentally discovered a large number of ordnance weapons in a secret passage under the palace. The matter was too serious, so naturally it was reported to Chen Xiaolong immediately. After Chen Xiaolong arrived, he also realized the seriousness of the matter. Because these ordnance and equipment are not only brand new, but also have been deliberately erased from the traces of military industry. Obviously, he doesn't want outsiders to guess his identity behind the scenes from the details. There is actually someone behind this? Chun Beiyuan frowned slightly, and there was a hint of coldness in his eyes. The most taboo in doing things was to cut the grass without removing the roots, leaving hidden dangers. Now that he has taken care of the Kingdom of Clover, there is a high probability that the forces behind him will not give up. After all, his actions undoubtedly touch the cake of the person behind the scenes. It will never be that simple for a force that can produce arms worth billions in the early stage at once. If the identity of the other party is not found out, he may be easily plotted. When he reaches his status, the most taboo thing is for the enemy to be in the dark and we to be clear. Who is the other party? Chen Beiyuan knew very well that since Chen Xiaolong would make this call to him, he should have found out the other party's background in advance. Even if it's not found out, isn't there still a Prince Talos who is still alive? As long as they are captured and tortured, they will naturally be able to target them. Ha ha ha, young master. Although those guys have erased the traces of these ordnance and weapons, our people are not just freeloaders. Through various data comparisons and the traces left behind, we quickly targeted those with the spirit of craftsmanship of Sakura people. This batch of weapons and equipment should belong to the Ito family. Chen Xiaolong directly told all the results of the investigation. The Ito family, the first family of Sakura country, 
Its power is so huge that it almost controls the lifeblood of the entire Sakura Kingdom. Even the royal family of Sakura Kingdom was ignored. This is a behemoth with top powerhouses. Even the Sakura Group, one of the world's top 10 arms dealers, comes from the Ito family. However, after learning the other party's true identity, Chun Bei Yuan's frown relaxed. Now that you know the identity of the other party, things are much simpler. This batch of weapons and equipment has now fallen into his hands, so naturally he owns them all. If the Ito family is dissatisfied, they can come to him. No matter how strong the Ito family is, is it possible that it can still be stronger than the Dong Chen family? If the other party dares to cause trouble, it will not be that difficult for the Dong Chen family, the spokesperson of the Imperial military, to deal with it. You know, within the Imperial military, there have always been voices for expansion. In particular, as the Empire has grown stronger in recent years, this voice has gradually begun to grow louder. If Mr. Chen hadn't cut off a large piece of meat from a ferocious alien beast on the border front, and everyone was busy dividing the meat, people would have started to show up. Young master, what are you going to do with these things in Cloverfield Kingdom? The rest of the things will be taken over by the Lonting Branch for the time being. Don't touch the ordnance and weapons and have them sent back. In an instant, Chen Beiyuan thought about how to dispose of this batch of weapons and equipment. It just so happened that Lin Xiao, the son of fortune, was cultivating his own armed forces and would probably be interested in these things. Lin Xiao, who was returning to his dormitory, suddenly received a call from Chiu Shuame, the blue president, and was stunned on the spot. You know, this female CEO rarely calls him on her own initiative. Basically, she only calls him when Qing Lan is faced with a huge decision, or when something big happens. Could it be that something happened? Lin Xiao quickly answered the phone. Shuame, what's the matter? Director Lin, a batch of standard ordnance without military standards has leaked out of the black market in the Magic City. It is fully equipped in all aspects. It is initially judged that it is enough to fight a small war. Chiu Shuame's cold voice came from the other end of the phone. Even facing him, the chairman and founder of Weilan, there was no enthusiasm at all. Instead, he had a businesslike attitude. However, Lin Xiao was accustomed to this and was not dissatisfied at all. Because he knew very well that Chiu Shuame, a business elite woman, had this character, and capable people were always different. Over this period of time, the reason why Weilan has been able to develop and make profits so quickly is inseparable from the ability of this female president. As long as he asks for something, Chiu Shume will do it quickly. As soon as he had the idea of forming an armed force, Chiu Shume quickly recruited a group of people for him and put the framework in place. It can be said that Lin Xiao seems to have regarded Chiu Shume as a confidant and has great trust. Even if the other party's personality is a little colder, Lin Xiao will ignore this small flaw. What concerned Lin Xiao even more was what Chiu Shume said. A batch of second-hand standard weapons, including some weapons of mass destruction, this undoubtedly cheered him up. If he could eat this equipment, wouldn't he be able to form his personal weapon in minutes? Nowadays, he cannot afford to recruit those powerful people with high cultivation level. But the strength is not enough, so technology can help. You know, Chen Beiyuan clearly demonstrated to him what the power of technology is before. Even if he is targeted by several missiles now, he is at risk of being killed. Moreover, these weapons may also come in handy when dealing with Chen Beiyuan. Shuame, how much does this batch of weapons and equipment cost? Director Lin, this batch of weapons is black goods, and there is no military industrial mark. The source of the goods behind the scenes cannot be found. It should be resold secretly by a big force. The price is a bit high. The initial budget is at least 4.5 billion. If you want, I can negotiate with the other party and pay a deposit in advance. Chiu Shuame raised the price by 50% without hesitation, giving Lin Xiao a severe blow to his aorta. Okay, I'll leave this matter to you. Make sure to take down these weapons. While Lin Xiao was shocked by the shocking price, he gritted his teeth and prepared to eat these weapons. Although the items are a bit expensive, they are black goods after all. As long as his armed forces can be formed as soon as possible, then it's not too bad. Azure Company. Okay, Director Lin. Chiu Shuame hung up the phone coldly, then took out another cell phone from her chest and dialed another number. The originally extremely cold voice suddenly became alluring and moving, just like a goblin trying to eat people. Young Master Chan, when I get this batch of weapons and equipment, maybe I can start a war like Chan Beiyuan and easily destroy a country with just one sentence. When he thought of that scene, Lin Xiao suddenly trembled with excitement and had higher expectations for his future. However, what he didn't know when he was caught up in his beautiful fantasy at this moment was that the armed forces he secretly recruited were almost all Chun Beiyuan's people. The owner of the goods in the Magic City black market was also arranged by Chan Beiyuan. His move was equivalent to upgrading a wave of weapons and equipment for Chan Beiyuan's people for free. What made him even more unexpected was that his cold-blooded female CEO was not as cold-blooded as he imagined. On the contrary, when she faced Chan Beiyuan, she was so enthusiastic that she even took the initiative to sit on him. 
He seems to be living in a Truman Show, arranged by others. These are small sections, though. Chapter 100, Part 2. As long as he is happy at this moment, it will be fine. Thinking about it, Chen Beiyuan, as the behind the scenes director, is also very pleased. Thanks for watching. You can find the next videos in the playlist linked in the info card or directly on my channel. If you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. Feel free to drop a comment.